The last few days since the museum incident were frustrating to say the least, while Percy was used to the occasional weird experience, this one took the cake. The rest of the school year, Percy thought that the entire campus was playing a trick on him. Everyone acted like there had been no Mrs. Dodds ever at Yancey Academy, and that Mrs. Curry women who he had never seen in his life had been the pre-algebra teacher, since the first day that year. Whenever he would spring a question of Mrs. Dodds on someone they would stare at him as if he were crazy. The only reason he hadn't been convinced that Mrs. Dodds hadn't been a hallucination was the reactions of his friends. Whenever asked about Mrs. Dodds, Naruto would just look at him blankly until he dropped the subject, and Grover would hesitate and then claim that she didn't exist. He knew they were lying. It wasn't Naruto that made him think this, Damn his ninja experience. It was Grover's reaction that had him convinced they were. But they held to their story. Percy threw his mythology book across the room in frustration, thinking over the things that had happened over the last two months while he studied wasn't getting him anything other than a migraine. Naruto looked up from his orange book when he heard the mythology book hit the wall you know throwing your book at a wall isn't going help you learn what you need to pass the mythology test. Besides what did the wall ever do to you? Naruto said then asked with a joking smile. He glared at him, it's not my fault I have dyslexia, Mr. I use shadow clones to study for me, he said looking over to the clone that was indeed studying Naruto's own Greek mythology book. Naruto just shrugged, what can I say, the things are useful and it helps that I can make thousands of them. He said before looking up to Percy when he heard him snort, then why not go to Mr. Brunner and ask for help? I on the other hand am going to bed, training wiped me out today he said as he marked his place in his book and put his head down and closed his eyes. Percy just shook his head as he walked out the door, all you did was work on your sword and fighting stances, while your clones worked on everything else lazy bastard. As he approached the office Percy could hear muffled voices and saw a light coming from the slightly agar door. Coming closer he heard a voice that was defiantly Grover's. Worried about Percy, you guys. He froze. While he wasn't an eavesdropper he couldn't turn away when he heard one of his friends talking about him to an adult. He inched closer. Alone this summer. He heard Grover say, I mean a kindly one has been teaching in this school. All year. Now that we know for sure and they know too dash. You will only be worsening matters by rushing us, now it was Naruto's voice say. Now I wouldn't mind going to camp but damn it, Grover give us at least till the end of the school year. He continued. I've been training my whole life in the ninja arts, so I can take out almost any monster. Percy though hasn't even realized what kind of potential he holds. Naruto's voice stopped as Percy heard something that sounded like a horse's hoof stamping the ground. We need to be sure that both Naruto and Percy are ready. Mr. Bruner's voice came into play. But they may not have time. The summer solstice deadline dash what's this about the solstice? Naruto asked. Nothing you need to worry about Naruto, the original is in your room right? Mr. Brunner asked. There was a sigh of annoyance, yeah, boss is in the dorm. Probably left a clone to study for him while he sleeps tonight. The now identified clone said before muttering something Percy couldn't hear. But anyway the deadline will have to be resolved without Percy, Grover. Just let him enjoy his ignorance while he can. Brunner said. But he saw her. His imagination, Brunner insisted. The mist is a powerful thing. Casting it over the students and staff was enough to convince him of that. Chiron I can't fail again, not after Dash. You haven't failed Grover, Brunner assured kindly. I should have seen her for what she was sooner. Now let's just worry about keeping Percy alive until next Dash. The book that was in Percy's hand dropped and hit the floor with a thud. Everything went silent. Hard-hammering Percy picked up the book and rushed down the hall. 
He looked back to see the shadow of something a lot taller than his wheelchair-bound teacher pass over the window of the door holding what looked like an archer's bow. Percy stumbled some and slipped into a nearby room. A few seconds passed before he heard what sounded like a horse shuffling outside the door he was hiding behind. A dark shape passed over the window and then moved on. Bruner's voice spoke moments later, Nothing, my nerves haven't been right since the winter solstice. Mine either, Grover's voice said, but I could have sworn Dash, will someone please tell me what happened at the winter solstice? Naruto's agitated voice spoke interrupting Grover. There was silence for a moment before not now Naruto, Dispel and Grover get back to the dorm. You both have a long day of exams ahead of you. Don't remind me. They both grumbled. The lights dimmed in the office after a poof sounded signaling that Naruto's clone had dispelled as ordered. Percy slipped out of the room he was in and headed back to the dorms. When he arrived back at the room he sweat dropped. The reason he did so, was because there in front of him were four girls picking at the lock that was on his and Naruto's door. Hurry up we don't want to wake him, one of the girls said. Don't worry, I'm being as quiet as I can. But we got everything, the one who was picking the lock said slash asked. I've got the ropes. The third said. And I've got the drugs, all we need to do is put this in his mouth and he won't wake up for five hours, Naruto's body is all ours kukukuku. Another, and by far the oldest of the group said laughing creepily at the end. Percy stared at them with a deadpan look, I think I figured out why Naruto changes our locks every day, and to make things worse the one who said that Naruto's body would be theirs is the reading teacher, he thought in alarm and then hurried back to Mr. Bruner's office. When he got there to see that the door was now shut Percy knocked, after a moment he heard a muffled come in and he walked in. Mr. Brunner looked a little confused when he saw Percy come into his office, Ah Mr. Jackson what is it that you need of me this late, he asked with a smile. Pushing the recent conversation he overheard away Percy started to explain, Well, at first I was coming here to ask for help to study for the finals when I remembered I had forgotten my notes back at my dorm. He said making Mr. Brunner nod slightly confused, but when I got there, I saw why Naruto has been changing the locks of our room every night, he said with a sigh at the end. And why is that Mr. Jackson? Mr. Brunner asked curiously, the teachers had been trying to figure that out for a few months now. There were four girls, one of them being the reading teacher, picking the locks to our room, and it sounded like they were planning to rape him, he said sweat dropping. When he heard this Mr. Brunner just stared at him thinking he was joking, excuse me. This isn't a joke is it? Percy just shook his head, I'm not joking sir, if you don't believe me, then check for yourself, he deadpanned. Mr. Brunner nodded as he allowed Percy to lead him to the dorm room he shared with Naruto, and saw that they were still there picking at the lock. When he saw this Mr. Brunner sweat dropped himself, I do believe trying to break and entering into a fellow student's dorm in the middle of the night is against school rules. He said making them jump, and slowly turned to see both him and Percy standing there and knew that they were busted. Mr. Brunner looked at the group and shook his head in disappointment, I never would have expected this of any of you. You should be especially disappointed in yourself MRS he said to the reading teacher making her nod in shame. Now every one of you will follow me to the principal's office, I'm sure you'll get a stern lecture on how to properly behave there. He said making the girls and one teacher nod before he turned to Percy. Now, I do believe that you should get to bed Mr. Jackson, sorry I couldn't help you study but this needs to be taken care of. He said making Percy nod in understanding before he lead the group of four to the office. Percy just shook his head as he went back into the room to see that Naruto's shadow clone was still studying, and the real one was sprawled on top of his bed, he sweat dropped again when he saw this, he doesn't have any clue how close he came to losing his virginity tonight. He thought as he changed and went to bed. But before he fell into blissful sleep he had this thought, what are they keeping from me? 
On the bus. We find the three friends on the bus to Manhattan. Percy was busy interrogating Grover about the kindly ones and Naruto was currently reading his Ika Ika book. Naruto suddenly got a devious idea, he took out a spare book he kept on him and slipped it into Percy's bag, he'll thank me for the book I guarantee it, if not then his mom will find it either way it'll be entertaining, he thought with a smirk, it could go one way or the other. But it would still be entertaining to either watch his friend bow and thank him profusely, or watch as he got chewed out by his mother. A few minutes after Naruto had slipped the book into Percy's bag the bus broke down. They filed out and had to wait in the heat of the countryside while the driver worked on it. Ten minutes later and after watching some old ladies knitting giant socks and then cutting a string Naruto was fed up on waiting for the bus to be fixed and went right up to it and gave it a chakra enhanced kick. What happened next surprised everyone but the three friends, the engine gave a cough and it roared to life. Everyone looked at him and he just cocked his head to the side in mock confusion, what? I had heard that sometimes these things just need a kick to work. He said, causing everyone including his friends to look at him, the driver just shook his head after a while and told everyone to get back on the bus. When they sat back in their seats Percy and Grover were staring with a deadpan look at him, something on my face, he asked without looking up from his book causing them to faceplant. You're insane you know that. Percy said, picking himself up off the floor, Grover nodded to show he agreed. Naruto smirked and sent a side glance at Percy, and what's wrong with that? Once again, they faceplanted. After stopping at the bus terminal, Naruto and Percy ditched Grover when he had to use the restroom each with their own reasons. Percy because Grover was starting to freak him out, and Naruto, because he wanted to get away from the smell of goats. They took a cab to the apartment building that Percy lived in and walked into it. Naruto had to plug his nose when he walked inside and saw that beer cans littered the carpet, it reeked like cigar smoke, something that his enhanced smell couldn't take. He activated a filtering seal on the inside of his mask, and let it do its work. Percy just shook his head as he saw Gabe, two of his friends, and Eddie the super of the apartment, doing what they normally did. Gabe turned and looked them over with a glare so you're home. He said with a frown to go with it. Where's my mom? Percy asked glaring right back. She's at work. You got any cash? Gabe asked. Before Percy could retort Naruto stepped up to the table pulled a roll of cash from his pocket. Percy smirked when he caught the gleam in Naruto's eyes, he knew what his friend was up to. Naruto looked at the three tuskless walruses in front of him, so that's Gabe eh? Time to have some fun he thought with a smirk, before he turned to Gabe, deal me in, I've got a hundred bucks right here, and I'm pretty good with card games, he said with a challenging twinkle in his eyes. Gabe raised a brow before his eyes narrowed into a glare, and why would I want to play against a brat like you? Besides I didn't ask you, I asked him. After all, if someone expects to live under this roof, they ought to carry his own weight he pointed to Percy when he said this. The twinkle in Naruto's eyes vanished and he returned Gabe's glare full force. First of all, you have no right to demand money and say that he needs to pay to live here. That is called child labor and is illegal, that is something that can put you away for a fair number of years. All it would take is a simple phone call. He threatened. So let me play, if you win you can have all my cash. And just like that, his expression turned from threatening to cheerful in a matter of seconds, though, he did put extra emphasis on the if, knowing full well there was little chance of Gabe actually winning. Gabe eyed him with a wiry eye, Naruto, and to a lesser extent Percy, could tell he had hit a nerve when he had threatened Gabe with the truth. It took a minuet before Gabe nodded, his glare worsening. Fine you can play. Just don't expect to win, for I am the gambling god, brat. Naruto smirked as he pulled up an extra chair, try saying that after I kick your ass. Percy having seen all this just shook his head with a small grin as he walked to his room, inwardly thinking, 
Gabe, you've got no chance against him. For once I actually feel sorry for you. It was true too, Percy, along with several others from school, had never been able to win a game of cards, or any other game for that matter, against the blonde. In short, Gabe was royally screwed. An hour later. Sally Jackson, a middle-aged woman working hard to provide for her family, was extremely confused when she walked into her small middle-class apartment to see her husband, Gabe, and his friends all sitting at the kitchen table, naked as the day they were born and crying waterfall tears. When she looked over to the side of the table she saw a blonde-haired, mask-wearing, boy around her son's age, sitting in a spare chair with a huge pile of stuff in front of him. Items in the pile included, but were not limited to, a television, several DVDs, Gabe's keys to his Camaro, a teddy bear, and finally the cloths that everyone had been wearing. The boy was currently counting a huge wad of cash, and she could tell that he had a wide grin on his face under that mask. Pleasure doing business with you gentlemen. Though, a little warning for next time. Don't gamble with someone who has the luck of a fox. He said, pocketing his winnings, minus the cloths and the bear, and putting what wouldn't fit in his pocket into his backpack. Naruto turned when he heard the door open and saw Sally staring at the scene in confusion. He smiled kindly at her, A-H-H you must be Percy's mother. I'm Naruto Uzumaki Harakin, a pleasure to meet you Mrs. Jackson. He said, sticking his hand out for her to shake. She smiled back at him and shook his hand, it's a pleasure to meet you as well, Naruto, I've heard a lot about you from your mother. She said making him nod. Is Percy here, she asked now that the pleasantries were over with. Naruto nodded. He's in his room. He said and turned to the table as Sally started walking down the hall. I bid you adieu gentlemen. He said with a smirk, but just as he was going to turn to follow Sally, he said, you can keep the cloths. And you. He turned to one of Gabe's friends, need some therapy if you keep that in your pocket. Naruto said pointing to the bear, but you can keep it. And he walked away. Meanwhile in Percy's room, he and his mother had been discussing about what he hadn't mentioned in his letters while he was cleaning out his school bag. That's pretty much what happened. Percy said, digging the last item out of the bag. Glancing down at it, Percy froze when he saw the book. Sally seeing her son not moving looked over his shoulder and saw a bright orange book in his hands, and raised a brow. What's that? She asked causing Percy to jump slightly and turn to her, oh, oh J just something a friend gave me, he said nervously trying to hide it behind his back. Now Sally was starting to get interested. It wasn't a book that she had seen, and wanting to become a writer she usually did know about the latest books. But she could see that it was something that her son didn't want her to see and that had never happened before, Percy, let me see that book. She said getting a look and using a voice, she didn't use very often. Percy seeing his mother's look a look that she didn't use very often but when she did look out, gulped nervously and shakily handed it over. Once the book was in her hands she immediately flipped it to T a random page and began reading. Sally got no further than five lines before her face was as bright red as a tomato, her eyes were wide, and there was a slight trickle of blood coming from her nose. She slammed the book closed and looked up to Percy who was now trying to slip out of the room, P. Percy, where did you get this, she asked darkly, causing him to freeze just as he reached the door. L. Like I said, a F friend gave it to me, he stuttered nervously, causing her to look at him with an even darker look. And just who is this friend, she asked as her hair now shadowed her eyes. Percy was just about to answer her when the one responsible for the situation he was in walked through the door. Hey Percy you find the surprise I left you yet? Naruto asked before he saw what Sally had in her hands and he began to sweat, slightly scared. Percy seeing his friend like this gained a dark gleam in his eyes, actually mom Naruto was the one who gave it to me, he said drawing a look of betrayal from his masked friend, 
He gave him a look that said, If I go down for this you're going down with me. Sally turned her head to the now shaking in fear Naruto and asked is this true? Naruto seeing as he had no other way to get out of this situation, shakily nodded his head in conformation. What happened next surprised them both. Because instead of unleashing a dosage of feminine fury on them like they had expected, she had taken Naruto's hands into hers. And was I level with him, making him blush, and causing Helena to growl, let him go you bitch he's mine. Only the ones I approve of can be with him. When Naruto heard this he felt the blush on his face become deeper and was inwardly thankful of his dad for leaving him his mask. Don't worry Lina-chan, you and anyone who loves me like you are the only ones for me, he thought to her. Yes they had gotten together, but only in the last two years. Reason being, was that once Naruto had matured enough to recognize when a woman was in love, had seen how she was acting around him and had discussed what he felt about for her with his mother. Then he had confronted her about her feelings and after she had confessed, he confessed his own feelings. But what had surprised him was that she was willing to share him with others, and had secretly admitted to being bi. But she had said that only those who really loved him and those she approved of could be with him, and Naruto could see her reasoning. But back to the story. You bet your ramen that is true. Helena said, making Naruto send a mental nod, but he silently prayed he wouldn't have to bet his favorite food on anything ever. It's be his luck his first loss at gambling would be when he did. Please, Naruto, who gave you this book and where did they get it? This is a work of art. Sally said slash asked with the dreaded puppy eyes. Oh come on. I thought that no one in this world knew how to use that jutsu. Naruto shouted in his head. Underworld. Hades and Yahiko were in despair when they saw this. I can't believe the look is in this world too. Yahiko exclaimed, crying anime tears at the sight of Naruto being subjugated to it. I thought it was only in the shinobi world. Hades said and as one the two males went up to the closest wall and began banging their heads against it why? 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 They grunted as their heads impacted the stone wall. Seeing them doing this made Kushina and Persephone sweat drop. Should we tell them it's a technique all women and small children have in their genetics, no matter what world they're from? Kushina asked her sister wife. Persephone looked thoughtful for a moment before shaking her head, Nope, I don't know about you, but I'm rather enjoying the show. She said, making some popcorn appear between them and started eating, she was quickly joined by Kushina as they continued to watch the males in the room hitting their heads with Naruto and the others. Naruto, having given up on trying to resist the look Sally was giving him, sighed in reluctance, I got it from my mother, she got it from an old teacher of hers, and it is isn't it, dot, he asked with a large smile as he pulled his hands loose. Sally nodded excitedly in agreement as she stood back up, yes. You wouldn't happen to know this teacher of your mother's would you, she asked curiously. Naruto shook his head, sorry, but I don't have a clue who he is other than that he was my godfather. He said, making her nod and then turn to Percy, I've got a surprise for you Percy. She said, making him raise a brow, we're going to the beach. Percy's eyes widened M on talk. Three nights same cabin. When? Just as soon as I change. Percy couldn't believe it. They hadn't been able to go to the beach the last two summers, mostly because Gabe said they didn't have enough money. But looking past his mother he saw Naruto, and could tell he was smiling softly at the scene. He got an idea. Hey mom, he asked getting a raised eyebrow from Sally, could Naruto come too, he asked. Out of all the things they thought he was going to ask this was not one of them. They both looked confused. Why would you want me along? It's your time with your mom. I'd just be a third wheel. Naruto asked slash said. Percy shook his head when he heard his friend say this, No you wouldn't man, and you're my friend I wouldn't let you spend the summer with nothing to do besides training. He said. 
The response got wide eyes from Naruto and an even more confused look from Sally, training, she asked. Both boys looked a little nervous realizing the slip up, you uh, yeah, Naruto's a big martial artist and practices every day. Percy said. Why yeah I like to do a little kung fu every now and then. Naruto said doing a few mock moves. Sally looked a little suspicious for a moment before she sighed, and then nodded, all right, I guess that he can come with. Besides it's not very often that we can go and it would be nice to have a guest for once. She said, before she added, but only if Conan says you can. And she went to change. An hour and a half later. After Sally had changed, Assured gave that the expenses would be coming out of her own pocket, and gotten the okay from Conan they were on the way to Montauk. Though Gabe it seemed had forgotten that he had gambled away his Camaro and had spent a half hour looking for the keys, only to be reminded by Naruto himself that he was now the owner of the car. A fact that had Gabe once again crying in shame. Now they were in Naruto's new car heading towards the ocean. Ha 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 did you see his face? Percy asked Naruto from the back seat through his laughs. Yep priceless. Naruto chuckled as he rode in the passenger seat. Someone mind telling me what's going on? And how did you convince Gabe to give you his car Naruto? Sally asked confused as she drove. The boys looked at each other and just shrugged, we decided to teach Gabe not to gamble so much anymore. Naruto said causing her to look even more confused, and you got his car how, she asked. Naruto sweat dropped a bit, long story short, he put it up for a wager, and I won. He said now getting a nod from Sally. I hope he learns his lesion then. She said drawing confused looks from the boys. Huh Percy said, I figured you'd be mad. Sally shook her head, a small smile forming, I'm not, and in fact I've been on him to stop for a while now. She said, I just hope that he learned not to. They talked some more as they drove. Sally asked Naruto if blue was really his mother's natural hair color, and was shocked to learn that it was, when she asked how it was possible he just said that it was some twist in her genetics. Percy laughed a little at that getting Naruto to look around at him, what, he asked. Percy shook his head, nothing it's just that a few years ago mom and Gabe had a huge fight about blue food. He said, getting a confused look from Naruto, blue food, he asked looking over to Sally who looked away in embracement. Percy nodded, yeah, Gabe claimed that it didn't exist and since then mom's been making most of our food blue, blue birthday cakes, blue smoothies, blue corn tortilla chips, and brings blue candy home from work. He explained, somewhat enjoying that his mother's face was becoming redder with each word. Just as Naruto was going to ask more, Sally said, Oh would you look at that we're here. And indeed they were. After cleaning out the cabin, the three of them walked on the beach, fed blue corn chips to the seagulls and snacked on blue jelly beans, saltwater taffy and several other things Sally got from the candy store. After that they sat at a campfire roasted marshmallows, and told stories. So there I was, hanging from the grappling rope with two buckets of paint in hand. I was just about to begin my task when the light came on. I looked over and there in the doorway was the principal. We started at each other for what seemed like ages before we moved at once. I unbuckled myself from the harness and was out of the room faster than anything while he was calling for backup. Naruto said as he held his audience captive, however my escape was not to be, as the principal had a partner waiting outside the door, I fought with all my might but it was fruitless. So needless to say I was expelled in a letter sent to mom. He finished telling the tale of his latest and only failed prank. Haha, <laughs> I was wondering why you got expelled too. Percy said, chuckling, if I had been there it would have been both our hides. He said and he froze and turned to his mother, only to sigh in relief, as she was giggling to herself. What, she asked when she saw him sigh, aren't you mad that I started pranking? Percy asked with a raised brow. 
She sighed and shook her head, while I can't say that I like any one of you playing pranks. Doing them once in a while is a good way to express yourselves. She said causing him to look relieved, however she said getting a nervous look from Percy, if you start to do anything more past what Naruto was trying to, and I find out, you'll be grounded for a month. Is that clear? She asked in a sweet voice. Her voice made the preteen pale and nod faster than she could see. Good she said and her face took on its usual calm and caring look. Percy sighed in relief, before he looked over to Naruto in slight confusion, Hey Naruto. Yeah. What is it that you were trying to do with that paint in the principal's office anyway, he asked, and Naruto started to snicker to himself. Oh I actually left a surprise for him. He said devilishly as he checked his wristwatch, and it should be going off right about, boom. Now. He finished as they looked up to the sky and saw a brightly glowing orange mushroom cloud. What the hell? Percy shouted, and now Naruto was laughing evilly. Sally looked on wide-eyed, just what was that, she asked shocked that Naruto could cause that. Naruto smiled even more evilly, that my friends was what happens when someone expels Naruto Uzumaki Hurricane from their school. Percy took one look at his friend and grimaced, the look was almost demented, what exactly was the surprise? He asked slightly scared now. It was just a giant paint bomb that has now covered Yancey Academy in bright orange paint. He said, getting a nod from the other two, and just how did you set it to go? Percy asked. Naruto smirked a bit at his ingenious use of seals, that, my friends, is a secret, he said, making a discreet motion to Sally. Percy nodded when he saw it and yawned. Well then time for bed. Sally said, getting a nod from Naruto and a groan from Percy, but he complied regardless. Later that night Naruto was awoke from his sleep by a clap of thunder. Damn it that was a good dream too. He thought as pictures of him and Helena skinny dipping in a giant bowl of ramen began going through his head, and he groaned as his body started reacting, okay think different thoughts, cold baths, running water, the sound of knocking on the door, Gigi doing the chanaked. Uh I think I'm gonna throw up. Naruto almost heaved at the last thought, but it had the wanted results. But something else from his thoughts caught his attention. Wait, knocking on the door, he questioned as Sally and Percy were awakened by the storm. Percy looking like he had had a different kind of dream that wasn't the good kind. And lo and behold the sound of knocking on the cabin door was heard over the downpour outside. As Sally ran to get the door Naruto was thinking, these winds are higher than thunderstorm level, these are hurricane level winds, but why? It isn't hurricane season yet. He was snapped out of his thoughts when he heard Sally shout to Percy to tell her something. Looking over to the one at the door he raised a brow, Grover was standing there without his pants, showing his goat half. Okay he was starting to get worried. Grover wouldn't show that off unless it was an emergency, and judging by his expression it was. The look in his eyes was wild like he had just been running from something, his eyes were also slitted like a goat's would be if they were beyond scared. He was dripping wet from the rain and his figure was twitchy, like he was on watch for danger. Just why that was answered when he heard the next clap of thunder, there was a low roar, coming from the distance. It wasn't close but it was defiantly getting closer. I take it that it's time to get to camp, he asked, drawing everyone's attention. Sally's eyes widened and Grover nodded frantically, it is and we have to hurry it was right behind me. He said in a nervous voice. Camp. Percy asked confused. Naruto just shook his head and threw both of them their raincoats as he slipped on his own, explanation later, moving now he said fiercely. That was all that was needed to get Sally into gear and she slipped her raincoat on and grabbed the keys to the car. Percy followed her lead more confused than before. After running through the rough rain and winds and getting in the car Percy who was beyond confused now asked, would someone mind telling me what the hell is going on? And why is one of my best friends a donkey from the waist down? 
Grover's eyebrow started twitching in annoyance. Goat he said, what? Percy asked, I am a goat from the waist down. There are satyrs that would trample you under hoof for that insult Grover shouted over the thundering rain. Wait satyrs? Like in Mr. Bruner's myths? Percy asked. Now Naruto looked back from the front seat, and stared straight at him with an intense gaze were those old at the fruit stand a myth, Percy? Was Mrs. Dodds a myth, he yelled over the thunder that had sounded. So you both admit that there was a Mrs. Dodds? Duh, both Grover and Naruto shouted. Then why dash? The less you knew the fewer monsters you would attract. Naruto said rolling his eyes as he glared out the back window at whatever was chasing them, I myself can handle most of the weaker ones and a few of the stronger ones anything more than that and I would have been killed had my mother not been teaching me. He said, as lightning flashed and Percy thought he saw Naruto's eyes change a moment from blue to purple with two rings around them, but he put it down as a trick of the light. You however, Naruto said as he looked back to Percy, don't have any training, the Mrs. Dodds incident was you running on instinct. If no one had been there to cast the mist over everyone at the museum then they would have seen what she was and saw what I was capable of. We had hoped that you would think that the kindly one was a hallucination. But it was no good. Fortunately or unfortunately depending on how you look at it you started to realize who you are. Who I wait, what do you mean? Naruto was about to answer when he heard the roar again, and judging by the look of realization he had, Percy heard it too. Percy, Sally said, there's too much to explain and not enough time. We have to get you to safety. Safety from what? Who's after me? Percy asked Grover shook his head there after both of you, we don't really know, but judging from the kindly one, I would guess the Lord of the Dead. And it appears that there are quite a few of his bloodthirsty minions who are as well. Grover, both Sally and Naruto shouted, the later feeling offended for some reason. Sorry guys, could you drive faster, please Mrs. Jackson. Percy was trying to wrap his mind what was happening, but couldn't do it. He knew that this wasn't a dream. Because he didn't have the imagination to dream this much up. As they turned a corner they could see farmland, and pick your own starberries signs on the fences. Where are we going exactly? Percy asked. Grover and Naruto exchanged a look, and said as one, someplace safe. You guys think that we're in danger all because some old ladies cut yarn, he asked. Those weren't old ladies. Grover said, and Naruto continued, those were the fates. Them cutting yarn in front of you means that someone's about to die. He explained. Percy raised a brow, the way you said someone sounds like you were meaning me. Naruto shook his head, that's not what I meant, I meant someone as in anyone. No you meant someone as in me. Percy insisted. That doesn't mean that it'll be you that's going to die. Just someone you know. Naruto said irritated turning around to face the front. Boys. Sally shouted. She pulled the wheel to the right hard to avoid something, to Percy it looked like a dark fluttering shape, to Naruto and Grover they knew exactly what it was. What was that? he asked. We're almost there. Sally said but in her head she was thinking, just another mile please. 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 Percy not knowing where there was began to lean forward in his seat in anticipation. A few moments later there was a jaw rattling boom, and the car exploded. Percy felt weightless, almost like he was being crushed, and several other things all at once, before he found his face smashed into the back of the driver's seat. Ow! Was his intelligent response as he peeled his forehead from said seat. Percy, Sally shouted in concern. I'm okay, you alright Naruto? Other than being upside down and my back aching, I am. Groaned Naruto's voice from the front. Trying to shake off the daze, Percy looked to see that his friend was indeed upside down, his head was in the seat and his legs were hanging in the air and down by his head. Despite the situation Percy snorted in amusement. 
Haha <laughs> let's all laugh at the guy who can kick your ass ten ways to Sunday. Naruto grumbled as he straightened himself out. Is Grover alright, he asked, making Percy look over to his other friend. All he saw was a crumpled heap of fur. Grover, the two boys shouted, and Percy began shaking his furry hip. Grover gave a soft moan of pain, and muttered out food weakly. They knew that there was hope for their friend yet. Sally after checking them all in a matter of seconds said, Boys we have to, her voice faltered as lightning flashed. Looking over to where her gaze was locked, the boys saw a big figure slowly trudging towards the wrecked car. It looked like a football player who looked to be holding a blanket over his head, his upraised hands made it look like he had horns. Though those were Percy's thoughts, Naruto knew exactly what that thing was and that those were really horns on the thing's head. Boys get out of the car. Sally shouted as she began to throw her weight into the driver's side door. The doors were jammed shut because of the mud. It was the same for the other three as well. They couldn't take the roof because the hole in it was jagged and still sizzling. It's no use. Percy shouted as he was banging on his door. Naruto sighed as he knew what had to be done. Everyone get back, he shouted. They couldn't see his face but they could tell by his voice they knew whatever it was he was going to do it was going to be big. After clearing away as far as they could in the cramped space of the car Naruto held out his hand. What happened next surprised no one but Sally. At first there was a small glow in his palm, then small wisps started to appear, and after that he held a palm-sized glowing and swirling blue ball of chakra. What the hell? Sally muttered no one heard her though, because as soon as Naruto had formed the ball he had thrust it into the passenger side door with a shout of raise non, and the door went spiraling off the car and into the storm. Shaking of her shock Sally shouted, everyone out. There was a flash of lightning and they all saw a huge pine tree at the crest of the nearest hill. Boys. Sally shouted as she climbed out of the car urging them to get out. Naruto nodded and slung Grover over his shoulder and climbed out, Percy close behind. See that tree? Sally asked once they were all out. The boys nodded, that's the property line, you need to get past it and head to the big farmhouse and yell for help. Whatever you do just don't stop till you reach the door. They could hear the man's grunting and snorting noises getting closer. Looking back Percy realized that he couldn't be holding a blanket over his head, because his hands which were huge and meaty were swinging at his sides. There wasn't any blanket. Meaning that the fuzzy mass that was too big to be his head was his head. And that those were really horns on his head. You're coming with us. Naruto shouted, causing Percy to look back and nod his head to show he agreed. No it's you too he wants. Besides I can't dash. I don't care you are coming with us, Percy shouted. His mother looked stunned for a moment before she sighed and nodded, we don't have time to argue, so let's go. She said and took Grover from Naruto and put one of his arms around her shoulder while the other went around Naruto's. As they started their way uphill, Percy glanced back again and got his first clear look at the monster behind them, and he recognized it. It had been in one of the first stories that Mr. Brunner had told the class. That's the Min Dash, don't say his name, Sally warned. Names have power. Everyone glanced back, to see that the bull man was bent over the car, sniffing or nuzzling the side of it. Percy wasn't sure why he bothered, since they were only about 50 feet away. Food. Grover moaned weakly. SHHH, Naruto shushed him. Mom, what's he doing? Doesn't he see us? Percy asked. His sight and hearing are terrible, Sally explained. He mostly goes be smell. But he'll figure out where we are soon enough. Naruto finished for her. As if it was on cue, the bull man roared in rage. He picked up Naruto's Camaro by the torn roof, the chassis creaking and groaning in protest. He raised it over his head and threw it down the road. It slammed into the wet cement and skidded in a shower of sparks for a half mile or so, before coming to a stop. 
A moment later the gas tank exploded. Oh come on! Naruto shouted, I just got that. Oops. Percy muttered. Percy, Naruto. Sally said drawing their attention, when he sees us, he'll charge. Wait until the last second. He can't change directions very well once he's charging. Understand. Naruto nodded as he continued to glare at the bull man. Percy however looked slightly confused, how do you know all this? I've been worried about an attack for a long time. I should have expected this. But dash there was another bellow of rage and they looked back to see the bull man heading towards them, clearly it had smelt them out. The pine was only a few more yards away but with Grover slung between Naruto and Sally, and Percy right beside them they wouldn't make it. Another roar ripped through the night, closely followed by several more. He's calling for reinforcements, Sally warned, a worried look clearly on her pale face. Naruto shook his head as he made another decision, a very stupid one at that. And he stopped, drawing their attention to him. Naruto what dash, you guys go on ahead I'll slow these guys down. Mother and son stared at him with dumb looks, huh, they said together. Naruto sighed as he began to turn away from them, I said, for you to go on ahead of me, I can buy enough time for you both to make it to the top and get some help. Now go, he shouted as a hundred or so forms began to rise from the earth. Percy and Sally continued to stare at him but didn't have time to argue as now he was fully turned and trudging down the hill towards the billman and his reinforcements. Percy nodded reluctantly as he slung Grover's arm around his shoulder, and started pulling them uphill. Percy, what are Dash, Mom, Naruto's powerful, I've seen what he can do. Believe me he can take them. Percy said, but in his head his thoughts went along the lines of, what the hell is he thinking? He doesn't stand a chance with those numbers. With Naruto. Naruto stopped and stood his ground as the last of the monsters rose from the earth. Despite his decision to send the others on and take the whole horde on himself, he wasn't as confident as he had portrayed, and his girlfriend was letting her displeasure be well known. Naruto Uzumaki. What the hell do you think you're doing? Helena shouted. Sighing, Naruto unsealed his sword. I'm sorry Helena, but this is something I must do. Do what exactly? Get yourself killed, she asked in worry. Naruto, not only are you facing the Minotaur, but you're going against a hundred other monsters at the same time. Even a child of Zeus couldn't do that, she shouted. Don't worry Lena, I'll be careful. Naruto reassured before cutting their mental connection, not giving Helena time to reply. She wouldn't have had the chance anyway as the monsters surrounding him all roared as one and prepared to attack. Smirking at the obvious challenge Naruto raised his blade. The celestial bronze metal glinted dangerously in the flashing lighting. At the sight of the blade the monsters roared again and charged to battle their prey. Naruto, adrenaline now pumping through his system, responded in kind and sent a large amount of wind chakra through his blade before swinging it and unleashing a blade of wind, which cut through twenty, each of them disintegrating to dust. The rest of the monsters were only encouraged by this and charged all the more faster at the blonde. Naruto jumped above the first to reach him and sliced his blade through its back as he landed before slashing at the next. By now the army had closed in on him from all sides. Damn. I need more space. Naruto growled. Several minutes had passed already and the number of monsters had been cut in half, but he the monsters were pressing in around him. Growling again, he extended his blade by channeling another dose of wind chakra through it and slashed through several monsters around him. Quickly making use of the small window of time he bought. Naruto Reseo led his sword and channeled a bit of chakra to his right forearm and in a small billow of smoke a pair of kunao appeared. If one were to look closer they'd be able to see that these were not regular kunao. No these were tripronged and had a seal formula across the handles. These were what had made his father famous in the shinobi realm. The very keys to the yellow flash's success. 
The only difference was the fact that they were made of celestial bronze, the only metal capable of destroying a monster. And in this situation, Naruto's only hope in defeating this horde of monsters. Smirking lightly, Naruto threw one of the kunao into the air and disappeared, the only thing remaining was a quickly fading bit of red light. The monsters stopped and stared at the scene, all of them wondering where their prey had gone. That question was quickly answered by a wave of fire bearing down on them from above. Fire style, great flame. The jutsu quickly caught what remained of the monsters and incinerated them all and much of the surrounding area in one sweep. Naruto landed in the center of the field of devastation, panting and with sweat dripping from his brow. That last jutsu still takes a lot out of me, he thought before he turned to view a sight that had his blood running cold. The Minotaur, having been forgotten during his fight with the army of monsters, was charging at his friends. Sally and Percy still carting the unconscious Grover up the hill. Acting quickly, Naruto threw the kunao in his hand, angling it in an arc so that it would land in front of the Minotaur. If he did it right he's be able to get to his friends before the Minotaur did. Locking onto this kunao beckon he flashed away just as the Minotaur reached the spot his kunao landed. The last thing Naruto saw was the black, fur-covered chest of the Minotaur before it impacted him, sending him spiraling into the backs of the others. Everyone this point in time. What the? Percy asked as he felt something impact him, and sent everyone sprawling, he looked to his side and saw, much to his concern that Naruto was laying there with swirls in his eyes, and out cold. Naruto, he shouted and started to shake his friend fearing for the worst. He only stopped when he heard him mutter oh look at the pretty lights mommy. Can I have some ramen, to say what's with the ramen? It's like he's addicted to the stuff he thought. He looked over to see his mother getting up and coming over to him, is Naruto, all right, she asked upon seeing who he was bending over, yeah, just knocked out. He answered, and she nodded. They heard Grover moan about food again right next to the tree and they knew that he was all right. Sally looked over after she had examined both the boys, and her eyes widened in fear at seeing the minotaur bearing down on them, with its arms spread wide, Percy, get back, she shouted shoving him and Naruto's unconscious form away, but getting caught in the minotaur's meaty hands. Percy looked up after recovering to see his mother in the monster's hands kicking and pummeling the air, but at the same time getting the life squeezed out of her. But her form was starting to glow a low golden light. Mom, he shouted at seeing her like this, she looked over to him and said one word go, before her form disappeared in a blinding flash of light. Percy stood there in shock at what happened, he couldn't believe it his friends were both unconscious, and now his mother was just taken from him in a flash of light. As the minotaur turned to him with eyes that spelled hate, he began to see red, and did the stupidest thing he had done up to this point in his life. He charged the beast. After the minotaur had disintegrated Percy felt like lying down and crying but he knew that his friends needed his help. He managed to somehow hoist his friends over his shoulders and stage her down into the valley, towards the lights of the farmhouse. He was crying and calling for his mother, but he held on to his friends he wasn't going to let them go. The last thing he could remember before he passed out was collapsing onto a wooden porch, looking up at a ceiling fan circling above him, moths were flying around the yellow light bulb hanging from the fan, and the stern faces of a familiar bearded man and a pretty girl who had blonde hair curled like a princess's. They were both looking down at him, these are the ones. They must be. The girl said. Silence Annabeth, the man said, he's still conscious. Bring them inside. The Void Naruto opened his eyes to see a place he hadn't in years, this place again, he asked himself with a sigh. Yes child, you're back it seems. Said the voice of the person he met last time, Naruto nodded yeah I guess I am. Though hopefully on happier maters. He said, as the girl began to form like last time as well. It is. She said giggling. Okay then why am I here, again, 
he asked getting to business, the girl nodded, I have a message from your mother. She said getting a surprised look from Naruto. My am mother, he asked, the girl nodded again. It seems that she either forgot to mention something in her letter to you, or she just realized it. She said getting him to sweat drop. Well at least I know where I get that from. He thought. What was it? He asked. It seems that the amulet that she told you about has another power other than those that she mentioned. She said. And that would be? He asked. The amulet can let one sealed spirit live inside of it. She said surprising him. Huh? He asked. She giggled again. You heard me right. She said. Naruto had to think for a moment on what he had just learned, the amulet that his mother left him that could not only travel the two realms and allow him to talk to sealed spirits, but it could also let the spirit live inside it. And this was an amulet that he hadn't even been able to look at, because when he had gone to take it from the seal he found that it was locked. A note had appeared after that though telling him that it would unlock after he got to camp, like his father's gift to him would. Okay, he said, is there anything else that I should know about it? She nodded what is it, he asked. The amulet by letting the spirit live inside of it can by proxy let the spirit use their powers. The girl said, say for instance, if you let Helena live in it to see the world from her eyes instead of yours, she would be able to use whatever tailed beast power she so chooses. Or if I had someone who had lightning powers they would be able to shoot electricity out of it, right? Naruto asked starting to get an idea. Yep, the girl replied in an excited tone, she was sure she knew what he was thinking. Naruto however had another thing to ask, how would they be able to get into the medallion? The girl giggled again and said, just have them place their right hand on it and say, I, they put their name, except to live in the Uzumaki amulet, and then the amulet will do the rest. She explained. Naruto smiled and bowed to her, something he hadn't done since he was in the elemental nations. Thank you for letting me know this, and please let Ka-san know that I say thanks. He said speaking elemental. The girl nodded with a smile and she began to fade but before she did she said, Oh I almost forgot, your father said to tell you he'll be visiting soon. And she disappeared. Naruto was a little surprised but smiled a happy smile when he heard this, and he disappeared from the void as well. Outside the void. Naruto opened his eyes with a groan, Ow, what the hell hit me, he asked. He was not expecting to get an answer, what hit you was a seriously pissed off minotaur, going full speed. A familiar somewhat amused voice said off to the right. Naruto looked over and saw a familiar face with the start of a small wispy beard on the chin, and a small smile above that. The face belonged to one Grover Underwood. Hey Grover how you feeling? Naruto asked, his face breaking into a small pained smile of his own. Grover's face lost the smile and he grimaced a bit, I'm doing okay, but Percy on the other hand, he trailed off and pointed to the bed to Naruto's left. Looking over Naruto saw that Percy was paced out on the bed. His face was bruised, but it was healing at a rate that Naruto could swear that Percy had a healing factor like his. He also noticed that Percy was muttering something about his mom in his sleep. He looked over to Grover for an explanation, and saw that he had his head down. After you passed out Percy's mother was caught by the Minotaur. I think you can do the math about what happened after that he said getting wide eyes from Naruto, and he looked down. I see. He said in quiet voice. They stayed that way for a while, before they heard a clopping coming from the hall outside the door. A few seconds later the door opened to reveal Chiron in his full centaur glory. The instant he saw Naruto his grim face broke into a smile, you're awake that's good. He said, and then looked over to Percy's sleeping figure and he shook his head, I guess Percy needs some more time to recuperate. Naruto smiled a bit when he saw the horse man, Chiron, it's good to see you. Chiron smiled again as he took in Naruto's form, 
it was almost like the last time he saw it, a little tired and sore maybe but the same nonetheless, it's good to see you too, Naruto, he said before his face turned serious, however I must ask you what exactly happened. Grover has already explained up to the point of the crash but after that it's a blank for him, so what happened, he asked. Naruto nodded, and began to explain. One explanation later. That's what happened, Naruto finished, up until I was knocked out at least, anything after you'd have to ask Percy. He added sheepishly to Chiron who nodded, and rubbed his chin in thought. While you did well against that horde, you were lucky to survive Naruto. He said getting a raised brow from said blonde, had you been any other half-blood you would have gotten yourself killed. He finished, causing Naruto to sigh and nod in depression, yes, sir. However, Chiron started making Naruto raise his head, you valiantly stayed back to fight the adversaries to give the others enough time to get help. So I must applaud your courage, and resolve to fight for others. He said with a smile and a kind look in his eye. Thank you sir Naruto said bowing his head. No need for that. Chiron said, but I do believe that it's time for you to see Camp Half-Blood. He said making Naruto nod somewhat excited, and he got up and followed Chiron out the door and into camp. The tour consisted of seeing the forest which he learned was stocked with monsters, the armory, the stables, he had seen stranger things than winged horses. The volleyball pit a few of the people there stopped to look at him and one nudged another and whispered, that's him. The one who defeated a whole horde of monsters, this got a raised brow from Naruto. After that they saw he was shown the strawberry fields where lines of campers were picking the berries while several satyrs were playing reed pipes that were causing the bugs to fly away in lines. Next was the arena, the archery range was next. Chiron said that if he ever wanted to learn how to shoot a bow then that was the place to learn how, as he was the teacher. The canoeing lake, then the amphitheater, and finally the cabins in the center there was a stone-lined fire pit. Even despite the fact that it was a warm day the hearth smoldered. A girl about nine years of age was poking at the flames with a stick. She looked up when she sensed Naruto and Chiron nearby and blushed when she saw Naruto wave and went back to poking the fire. Chiron raised a brow but said nothing. The cabins faced a commons area, which consisted of Greek statues, a flower bed, and a few basketball hoops. After the tour they had ended up at the big house again and were waiting for Percy to wake up. While they waited Naruto was looking over to the hills and spotted the pine at the crest of the hill. So that's Thalia's tree, he muttered in a low voice, but Chiron still heard him and he nodded grimly. Yes it is, Thalia daughter of Zeus lord of the sky. He said sadly, hunted since her birth, died fighting a horde of monsters atop that hill, but turned in the tree before her soul could pass to the next world, and now guards the camp's borders. He explained making Naruto nod. She's not dead. He said surprising Chiron. What do you mean? Naruto sighed and started to explain, what I mean is that since her soul hasn't been able to pass on to the underworld, then she's not technically dead, just in suspended animation where she's frozen in time as she was at that moment, and time is either passing slower or faster for her than it is for us. Chiron was gapping at him by the end of the explanation. He shook his head to clear it, how do you know all this, he asked. Naruto smirked a bit, I don't really, but if that is the case then I intend to either wake or free her spirit. He said pulling out a scroll from a pocket. How? Chiron asked curiously. Naruto smirked as he unrolled the scroll to reveal three seals on it, he bit his thumb and wiped the blood on the bottom most seal. There was a poof of smoke and something dropped out into his waiting hand. After the smoke appeared they saw that there in Naruto's hand was half of a golden amulet, it had what appeared to be a blood red eye with lines and tomes on them, it also had what appeared to be an upside down triangle surrounding it. And running through the top of it was a thin chain that someone would use to wear it. Naruto smirked, with this. 
Chiron meanwhile was staring at the amulet in shocked surprise, that's the amulet of the sage. It's said that it went missing centuries ago. How on earth did it find its way to Naruto, he thought in shock. He snapped out of it when Naruto started to walk calmly down the steps towards the pine that was Thalia, and Naruto, he called getting his attention, he turned back to look at him with a slightly confused look, where did you get that? Chiron asked. My real mother, she left it for me in that scroll. Naruto said and turned back to the hill and began to walk the steady incline, Chiron now right behind him. Reaching the pine at the crest, Naruto placed the amulet against the trunk took a deep breath and looked at Chiron, wish me luck. He said and thought talk, and he was pulled into the tree. Chiron gulped a bit as he saw Naruto's body get sucked through the medallion and into the pine. I wish you luck Naruto, may the gods be with you. And thunder rumbled across the valley. Inside the tree. So this is what Thalia's mindscape looks like. Naruto thought when he found himself in the same place that he had left just a moment ago. He looked around and saw the surrounding area to be an exact replica of the camp, just desert. As he looked around more he heard what sounded like crying coming from down by the cabins. He sighed, why is it every time I meet a sealed spirit they're crying, he asked himself, not really expecting an answer. Really now Naruto-kun is that how you feel about how we met, a feminine voice jokingly asked behind him. He froze and slowly turned to meet the blue eyes of his girlfriend. He stared at her shocked, h how, he asked his eyes wide, Helena giggled, don't be so surprised, the same thing happened when Kushina went to meet another Jinchuriki and their tenant. She said amused by his shocked face. Naruto shook his head after a moment to clear it, next time, Kaosan should warn me about this. He muttered in elemental. Underworld. Kushina face palmed, how in the world did I forget to mention that, she asked herself. Her question got a giggle from Persephone, and chuckles from Yahiko and Hades. They were somewhat amused that there was finally something that went wrong with one of the females of the group. And why are we laughing? Kushina asked with a dangerous glare in their direction. A glare that had them both huddled in a corner for dear life. That's what I thought. She said and turned back to watch the events in her son's life. Persephone sighed and shook her head, Men she thought and turned to watch her stepson. Back to Naruto. Naruto for the second time in his life felt that his question had both his dad's cowering from his mother. He shook his head again, and looked over to Helena, who was still looking amused. So should we go and meet Thalia? By the sounds of it she's already awake. He asked. Helena nodded we should. With that Naruto pocketed the amulet, and they set out into this deserted version camp. It took an hour or two to find Thalia. Reason was that they searched all the cabins to be sure before they went to search the biggest that was labeled number one. And when they got to the cabin they could defiantly tell that this was the one Thalia was in, because the winds which had been much like that at the real camp. Those being a gentle breeze had begun to pick up around it and lighting was shooting around the air as well. It was slightly difficult to navigate through it all but they managed. There was a close call when a small lightning bolt flashed just in front of them as they closed into the cabin. Well she's defiantly a wind and lightning type. Naruto thought offhand, as they reached the door. They both looked at each other a moment before they nodded, and Naruto pushed the door open. Inside it was dark and quiet. The only sound that was made was a sniffling from the girl that was huddled in the farthest corner of the cabin. When the door opened the girl looked up, and they saw that her eyes which were in electric blue were red and swollen from crying, her hair was done in a spiky bow, and she wore a black jacket over her death to Barbie shirt. She looked to be 12 or 13 years old. All in all she looked the definition of a mix of punk and goth. W who's there? She asked in a hoarse and scared voice, to Naruto, and Helena it sounded like she was hopeful that she would get a reply but scared that she wouldn't at the same time. 
Naruto seeing her in this state felt a tug on his heart, which somewhat confused him but he pushed it aside to step into the dim lighting of the cabin, we are. He said. Thalia's eyes widened when she saw that there was actually someone there with her for the first time in what felt like decades. More tears spilled out of her eyes and she began sobbing harder and buried her face into her knees. When he saw this Naruto went over to her and knelt down to make eye contact with her. Hey, what's wrong, he asked softly as he gently took hold of her chin and made her look him in the eye. Thalia seeing his concerned face, and feeling that his touch was real embraced him, and held him tight. Naruto was surprised when this happened but held her gently when he heard her muttering please be real to herself. It's alright, I'm here, he said softly. Helena smiled softly at the scene, well if things go right I think I found another mate for him. She thought mischievously. After an hour or so she finally calmed enough to lean back and take a good look at the one to find her. She blushed at seeing his concerned and caring eyes, but that was all she could see due to the mask that he was wearing. S sorry about that. She stuttered shyly and turned her head away to hide her blush. Naruto raised a brow at seeing this and Helena smirked. It's alright. Naruto said, I smiling at her, and causing her blush to deepen. I'm Naruto, Naruto Izumaki. Naruto introduced himself, he pointed to Helena who gave a friendly wave when Thalia turned to her, that's Helena of the Fox Clan. Thalia nodded to her and gave a weak smile to the both of them, my name's Thalia, Thalia Grace. She said with a small grimace at her last name. Naruto seeing it filed the question forming in his mind for later. It's nice to meet you Thalia. He said holding out his hand for her, she smiled softly and shook it, it's nice to meet you too Naruto. She said. Naruto smiled at her again, and unknowingly making her blush again, and asked, why were you crying? Thalia regained the said look, it feels like I've been here so long. She started, it feels like it's been years since I saw another person, she said as her eyes began to water again and Naruto wrapped his arms around her showing that he was there for her. I sometimes think that I can feel people around me, but I can't hear what they're saying. She continued as she clutched onto his shirt, afraid that if she let go he would disappear. It gets so lonely here. Can you imagine what it's like to be alone for so long? Never being able to see anyone, never hearing anyone, never knowing where you are, never eating, never sleeping. Only existing, she asked crying harder than she was before and burying her face into his shoulder. Naruto now was holding her tightly as he heard her speak, he could feel her pain deep in his heart, and looking over to Helena he saw that she had tears of her own in her eyes. She could feel her pain too, she had gone through the same thing Thalia had. Yes, I can imagine what it's like. Naruto said softly as he started rubbing her back. Thalia's eyes widened and she leaned back sniffling when she heard him, H how, she asked as she wiped some tears away. Naruto sighed and leaned against the wall as he thought how to answer her, he looked over and thought to Helena what do you think? A toned down version or all of it, he asked. She looked to be thinking a moment before she replied, give her the full version just not all of it. She thought to him, he nodded showing he understood. Naruto turned back to Thalia, who was looking at him with a curious look, waiting for his answer, and he sighed as he started his story. Well I was born in a village called Kanaha or in English the village hidden in the leaves. He began, and Thalia nodded, the village I'm from wasn't part of this world, it was in another dimension I guess you could call it. He said after a pause, the people of my world were capable of great feats, they could use their body's natural energy which is called chakra, to do these things. He said in remembrance looking to the roof of the cabin. Thalia's eyes widened in surprise but that changed as soon as she saw Naruto's face, that look that he had wasn't of happiness, or pain, just pure comfort, it was a look that made her blush more than she had before, but he said snapping her out of her embracement. The night I was born a great and terrible beast attacked the village. He said, and Helena unnoticed to Thalia, 
flinched a bit. The name of the beast was Qubai in my language, but is said as nine tails in yours. But anyway Qubai attacked just after I was born, and was destroying the village and decimating the shinobi forces. So my father summoned a giant toad something someone could do provided they had the right summoning contract and fought against the Qubai. He explained now starting to gain tears of his own, Thalia was crying again now but was too enticed by the story to do anything. W what happened next? She asked, hoping that it didn't lead to a situation similar to her own, Naruto wiped his eyes and continued, he was able to save the village but at a price. He said, what was the price? Thalia asked. Naruto turned his head to her and continued he sealed the Kyuabai into me. At the cost of his life. He said. Now Thalia's eyes were wide open in surprise, Naruto's father of all people did that to him. And you mother, she asked, he sighed, and looked away died in childbirth. Her last words were for me to have a good life. He said and he chuckled dryly, lot of good that did. He said. Why what happened? Thalia asked, Naruto sighed again and turned to look at Helena who was crying silently to herself as she was remembering the pain that Naruto had suffered, think about it Thalia, with all the destruction and death Kyuabai caused. And then suddenly disappearing with a child being held in the arms of the village's leader in its place. Where would all the hate that the village had towards the beast end up going, he asked. Thalia began to think it over. If the beast that caused so much destruction had suddenly disappeared and the village leader had died to seal the beast and had sealed into his own child, then that would leave the village's hate to go to her eyes widened as she looked back at Naruto. Fearing the answer she came up with. Naruto seeing her face nodded, yes all that hate went to me. He said, four out of my thirteen years were spent hiding from villagers that would rather see me dead, digging through garbage for food to eat and trying to survive form one beating to the next. He said and stood up to go over to Helena who had now curled up into a ball against the opposite wall and was rocking herself, and sobbing into her knees. It's okay Lina-chan, it wasn't your fault you were being controlled, please stop crying. He said softly as he hugged her and started rocking with her. Thalia much to her shock knew that Naruto had started to speak a different language and had somehow understood it. But what really surprised her was that Helena was the Kyuabai, that she was the one that was responsible for Naruto's pain, and that he wasn't angry at her for it. But strangely she couldn't bring herself to yell at her for being the one responsible for it all. She understood that Helena was being controlled so the blame couldn't really be placed on her. And Naruto? She asked, drawing his attention to her while he held the still sobbing Helena tightly, how was I able to understand the language you just spoke, she asked trying to avoid making Helena cry more than she was now. Oh that, he asked, and shrugged, I guess the amulet that I'm using to communicate with you is able to give a full understanding of a language and give them the ability to speak it too, because you just did. He said in her eyes that had already been wide could have been rolling on the floor. B but, Helena shakily spoke for the first time, we're on the reason why we came here, she said looking up, making Naruto nod and Thalia to look confused. Huh, she asked. Naruto chuckled a bit as he released Helena from his hold and helped both the girls stand, he found that Thalia was just a little shorter than he was. Yeah we came here to offer you something. He said, and what would that be, she asked with a raised brow. Well, Naruto began, how would you like the chance to see the real world, he asked, and the next thing he knew was that Thalia had pounced on him and was holding him tightly, and had tears of joy in her eyes at the prospect of getting out. Thank you she kept muttering, unaware that she was straddling his waist. Helena even though she enjoyed the scene cleared her throat to get their attention, when Thalia looked over and saw their position she blushed a red that would put a tomato to shame. She let out an eep and jumped off of him. S sorry, she shouted as she did so. Naruto sweat dropped as he got up, it's alright, he said but as I was saying. 
you would be able to see the world but there is a condition. He explained, Tholi you raised a brow, condition, she asked and he nodded, you would have to go from the tree you are living in, and be placed into this, he said and showed her the amulet. Thalia took a good look at it, would I be able to see the outside world with my own eyes, she asked, and he nodded. She gained a contemplative look. She stood there thinking for a few moments and finally gave a sigh, tell me what I would have to do and what are the benefits, she said slash asked. The benefits first then. He said and thought for a second or two. The benefits would be well you would be able to see the world for one, the second is that you can use your powers if you need to, and finally, you'd be able to decorate the mindscape you have in there. Instead of being forced to be in this deserted world he finished with a sweep of his hand around the cabin. Thalia nodded. But I promise you I will find a way to get your body out of this tree. Naruto said, she smiled at him thank you. She said, and I'll hold you to it. Don't worry Thalia chan I always keep my promises. Naruto said with a smile. Thalia nodded and asked, what do I have to do? She was eager to get out it seems. Right, Naruto said, what you would have do is place your right hand on the amulet and say, I Thalia Grace, except to live in the Uzumaki amulet. And it'll do the rest. He explained. Thalia nodded and placed her right hand on the amulet and said in a clear voice, I Thalia Grace, except to live in the Uzumaki amulet. She said. Nothing happened for a moment, but then the amulet began to glow a bright yellow, there was a flash of light binding them all and Thalia felt herself being pulled into it. After the flash cleared Naruto, and Helena looked up to see that Thalia was no longer in the cabin. Naruto placed the amulet around his neck and thought to it Thalia? Did it work? he asked. It took a moment but there was a reply yes it did. But it's so dark in here. Naruto nodded to himself, yeah it'll be like that until you start decorating it. To do so you just have to think it and it'll happen. He thought to her, he got an affirmative in response and then quietness. It seemed that Thalia had gotten to work on her own little world. Naruto gave a small grin, and turned to Helena, well shall we go, he asked, he got a nod from her and he thought outside and they were gone from the mindscape of the tree. Outside with Chiron. It had been 10 minutes since Naruto had gone into the pine, and Chiron was starting to get worried. He was about to head back to the big house to call a conference with the counselors, when the light began bending and Naruto began to take shape. After his form had solidified Naruto grabbed his head in pain. Ow, he groaned, and sat against the base of the pine, no one had said that it would leave him with a migraine. You all right, he heard Chiron ask, and he nodded, yeah just took more out of me than I thought it would. Chiron hesitated a bit but asked, did it work? Naruto grinned despite his headache, oh yeah it defiantly worked, right now she's inside the amulet creating her own world. Chiron sighed in relief but just as he was about to say something there was a shout of, hey what are you doing to that tree? They looked down the hill and Chiron groaned oh, sticks. Two days later. Uh Percy groaned as he opened his eyes, to find that he was sitting on a deck chair on a huge porch, overlooking a meadow. He smelled strawberries in the air there was a blanket over his legs, and a pillow behind his neck. While the scene around him was nice he had other things on his mind where am I? Did we stop here for something? Why is my throat dry as a desert? And why the hell do I feel like I've been hit by a bull, he asked in his head. He noticed that a drink was on the table next to him, it looked strangely like one of those iced tropical drinks with the straw being in it. He reached for it with shaky hands, and almost dropped it once he had lifted it off the table. Careful. A familiar pair of voices spoke at the same time, he looked to where he heard them and saw Naruto sitting on the steps of the porch, and Grover leaning against the rail, holding a shoe box. They looked like they normally did except that they were wearing blue jeans and an orange t-shirt that said Camp Half-Blood, 
Naruto of course had his mask on his face. Oddest thing, Grover looked like he hadn't had any sleep in days. Other than that they were the same Naruto, and Grover, not an eye changer or a goat boy. Here Grover said, handing him the shoe box. There's something in there for each of you. Percy opened it to find that there were a pair of black and white bull horns, one was jagged at the base and the other looked like it had been sliced off because the base was much smoother than the other. Percy stared blankly at them while Naruto looked up to Grover with realization in his eyes, these are. You both saved my life. Grover said, I well, the least I could do I went back to the hill. I thought one of you would want them. That really was the Minotaur then. Percy asked, um, Percy, it isn't a good idea dash, Grover tried to explain. That's what they called him in the myths, isn't it? Percy demanded. The Minotaur. Half man, half bull. Seeing Grover looking uncomfortable Naruto intervened Percy, you've been out for two days. How much do you remember? My mom. Is she really he trailed off when he saw their heads lower? I'm sorry Percy but she is. Naruto said in a low tone. I see. Percy stated quietly, tears stinging his eyes. He whipped them away before they could see them. He tried to get up but as soon as his legs touched the ground they buckled, Whoa there, Percy you need to rest a bit longer, and please drink this. Naruto said as he held one of Percy's arms to stop him from falling and helped him with the glass of whatever it was. Percy nodded reluctantly and began to sip at the drink in his hands. He recoiled at the taste, it was his mom's homemade blue chocolate chip cookies, turned to liquid form. He didn't realize that he had kept drinking it until it was gone. He looked into the glass sure that he had just had a warm drink to see that the ice cubes hadn't even melted. Feeling better now? Naruto asked with an eye smile. Percy gained a small smile of his own, like I could throw Nancy Bobafit a thousand yards. Naruto nodded and Grover gave a sigh of relief, that's good, he said. That's good. I don't think you could risk drinking any more of that stuff. Why? Percy asked with a raised brow. Naruto shook his head, no time, we have to go. Chiron and Mr. D are waiting. The porch wrapped entirely around the farmhouse. Percy's legs felt wobbly, trying to walk that far. Grover had offered to hold the minotaur horn he was holding, but he refused. He'd paid for it the hard way, and he'd be damned if it left his sight. As they turned to the next side of the house, Percy caught his breath. They must have been on the north shore of Long Island, because this side of the house, the valley marched all the way up to the water's edge, the water itself was glittering about a mile in the distance. Impressive isn't it, he heard Naruto chuckle beside him. Percy turned with a questioningly look, what? Naruto shook his head, and continued walking. Percy turned back to the site and saw things that amazed him, everything was made in ancient Greek architecture, except they all looked brand new. He looked down the porch to see that there were two men sitting across from each other, and there was a blonde-haired girl leaning on the rail next to them. The man facing them was a small, but porky. He had a red nose, big watery eyes, and curly hair so black it was almost purple. To Percy he looked like a middle-aged cherub. He wore a tiger-pattern Hawaiian shirt. He would have defiantly fit right into one of Gabe's poker parties, and looked like he could outgamble him as well. That's Mr. D. Naruto said, he's the camp director. Grover took it over from there, the girl, that's Annabeth Chase. She's just a camper, but she's been here longer than just about anybody. And you already know Chiron. Grover pointed to the guy whose back was to them. First Percy realized that the guy was in a wheelchair, and then he recognized the tweed jacket, the thinning brown hair, the scraggly beard. Mr. Brunner, he cried. The mythology teacher turned and smiled at them. His eyes had the same mischievous glint they got when he pulled a pop quiz and made the multiple choice answers be, ah, good, Percy, he said, now we have five for Pinnacle. 
He offered Naruto and Percy chairs to the right of Mr. D, who looked at Percy with bloodshot eyes and heaved a heavy sigh. I suppose I should grate you like I did your friend. There. He said in a bored voice, so welcome to Camp Half-Blood. There. Now don't expect me to be glad to see you. Ah uh, thanks. Percy said, scooting a little farther away from him. Annabeth. Chiron slash Brunner called the blonde girl. She came forward and Mr. Brunner introduced them. Percy was a little surprised that Naruto and Annabeth had met while he was unconscious but shrugged it off. This young lady nursed you back to health, Percy. Annabeth, my dear, why don't you check on Percy's and Naruto's bunks? We'll be putting them in cabin 11 for now. Annabeth shrugged sure, Chiron. She took a look at the minotaur in Percy's hands, then back at him and instead of saying something like you killed a minotaur. Wow you're so awesome. She said, you drool when you sleep. Then sprinted off down the lawn, sending a small glare at Naruto as she did so. Percy having saw it glanced at his friend with a curious look, something I should know about, he asked. Naruto shook his head, it's nothing we just had a small disagreement on a matter is all. Small disagreement? Thalia asked, so almost ripping your head off when she saw you near my tree was a small disagreement. She asked teasingly. Naruto's eyebrow twitched in annoyance but he said nothing, as they had gotten to know each other much better in the last two days since Thalia's release from the pine she had found Naruto would dull things down so they sounded much less serious than they were. And as a result had started teasing him about some of the things she found funny about that. Not that his confrontation with Annabeth had been that serious of course, but that's for a later time. Percy gave him a disbelieving look but dropped it, and turned to his teacher, so you work here Mr. Brunner. Not Mr. Brunner, Chiron said, I'm afraid that was a pseudonym. You may call me Chiron. Okay was Percy's confused reply, he turned to the director, and Mr. D does that stand for something, his question caused the man to stop shuffling the cards in his hands. He looked at Percy like he had just belched loudly, young man, names are powerful things. You just don't go around using them for no reason. Right sorry Percy chuckled nervously. I must say, Percy, Chiron cut in, I'm glad to see both you and Naruto alive. It's been a while since I've made a house call to any potential campers. I'd hate to think that I had wasted my time. A house call. His year at Yancey Academy. Naruto said, Chiron nodded, and explained further, it was mostly to instruct you and Naruto. We have satyrs in most schools, keeping a lookout. When Grover alerted me when he sensed there was something special about the both of you I decided to come upstate. It was a good thing the prank on the teacher's lounge happened the day before I arrived to teach, because it gave me a good excuse to convince the other Latin teacher to ah, take a leave of absence. You came to Yancey Academy to just to teach us? Percy asked. Chiron nodded. Honestly, I wasn't as sure about you as I was about Naruto at first, but when Naruto told us he already knew, and then his suspicions about you it convinced me. So we contacted your mother, to let her know we were keeping an eye on you in case you were ready for camp. But you both still had so much to learn. Nevertheless, you two made it here alive, and that's always the first test. Grover, Mr. D said impatiently, are you playing or not? Yes sir. Grover trembled as he took the fifth seat. Do either of you how to play Pinnacle? Mr. D asked eyeing Naruto and Percy suspiciously. Naruto nodded, yep. He said simply. Percy on the other hand shook his head in the negative, I'm afraid not. He said, he may watch Naruto gamble but that didn't mean that he knew how to. I'm afraid not, sir, Mr. D said. Sir. Percy said liking the camp director less and less every moment. Well, he started, it is, along with gladiator fighting and Pac-Man, one of the greatest games ever invented by humans. I'm happy to know that at least one civilized young man knows how to play. Mr. D said. 
I'm sure the boy can learn, Chiron said. Please, Percy said what is this place? What are we doing here? Mr. Brun Chiron why would you come to Yancey Academy just to teach me and Naruto? Mr. D snorted. I asked him the same thing. The Kemp director dealt the cards. Naruto's eyes gained more and more of the glint they did whenever he gambled every time one landed in front of him and Grover flinched when one landed in his pile. Chiron smiled sympathetically at Percy, Percy, he said, did your mother tell you nothing? She said he remembered the last time they had gone to Montauk and they had talked about his dad. She told me once that she was afraid to send me here, even though my father had wanted her to. She said that once I was here, I probably wouldn't leave. She wanted to keep me close to her. Typical Mr. D spoke. That's how they usually get killed. That's quite the amount to bid young man. He said it first to Percy then to Naruto who had just bid. Said young man gave a challenging smirk, I like to live dangerously. He said, and he heard a mumble in his head of, you have no idea how true that is. This was followed by a giggle from the one in the amulet. But he ignored them for the moment. Oh I think I'm beginning to like this boy Chiron. Mr. D said with a smirk of his own. His statement drew wide eyes from Grover and a small chuckle from Chiron, but the centaur turned his attention back to Percy. I'm afraid there's too much to tell. He said. I don't think our usual orientation will be sufficient, for either of you. Orientation film. Percy asked as he bid a small amount after having it explained by Mr. D. No, Chiron decided with a thoughtful look, well Percy. You know your friend Grover, is a satyr and that Naruto is a shinobi. You dash what, they were interrupted by Mr. D who had a surprised look on his face. Chiron I think I heard you wrong. Did you just say that this young man right here? He pointed to Naruto, is a shinobi, he asked with narrow eyes. And if I am? Naruto asked with narrow eyes of his own, he let a large amount of chakra swirl around him, almost blowing away the cards off the table. If Mr. D was surprised by the fact that Naruto was a shinobi, he was even more surprised by the amount of power rolling of him, such power. He thought eyes widening, while it's nothing compared to mine or any other gods, I can tell that it's growing and will continue to do so, but what at this darker power I sense within him, he thought. He shook off his surprise to see that Naruto had cut the flow of chakra and was now looking at him expectantly, oh, there's nothing wrong with it I'm just surprised to find. One here of all places since the world you come from has been sealed off for the last 13 years or so. He said. The others just shook their heads at this. They had already known about Naruto being from that realm, Chiron, and Grover when he had told them in the classroom that day and Percy a few months after he had found out about Naruto's use of chakra. Well then. Naruto said, I guess the seal slipped enough for me to come to this world. He said sarcastically. Mr. D chuckled I suppose it did, father was never really good with seals like the others. He believes more in brute force and power. Thunder rumbled across the valley, like someone up there was annoyed at Mr. D said director looked up at the sky and shouted it's true. You aren't. And you do. More thunder, blah blah. Everything was silent as Mr. D argued with the sky. The camp director turned back after a moment or two to see everyone staring at him, what, he asked, they continued to stare, he shook his head and went back to his cards. Now back to what I was saying. Chiron said after a moment of silence and turned back to Percy, you know that Grover is a satyr, and that Naruto is a shinobi, you know Dash, he pointed to the minotaur horn on the table next to Percy, that you have defeated the minotaur. Something that even if it was weakened is no small feat what you don't know though is that great powers are at work in your life. Gods the forces you call the Greek gods are very much alive. Percy stared at the others around the table, he almost hoped that one of them would yell not. But all he got was Mr. D yelling oh a royal marriage, trick, trick, and tallying up his points. 
Wait, Percy said, you're telling me that there's such a thing as God. Naruto shook his head, and drew Percy's attention, Percy that's an entirely different matter altogether. He said, for now though we won't deal with the metaphysical. Metaphysical? But Chiron was just talking about Dash. The gods, as in the great beings that control the forces of nature and human endeavors, the immortal gods of Olympus. Naruto explained, altogether they are a smaller matter. Smaller. Yes quiet. Chiron took over as he traded a card to Mr. D, the gods we discussed in Latin class. Zeus, Percy said, Hera, Apollo. You mean them. And once again thunder booming on a cloudless day. Young man, Mr. D, said looking up from the cards in his hand, I would really be less casual about throwing those names around, if I were you. But those are stories, Percy said, shaking his head in confusion, they're myths to explain lightning and the seasons, and other things like that. They're what people believed in before there was science. Science. Mr. D scoffed. And tell me, Perseus Jackson, Percy flinched at the use of his real name Dash, what will people think of your science 2000 years from now, he continued, hmm? They will call it primitive mumbo jumbo. That's what. Oh, I love mortals they have absolutely no sense of perspective. They think they've come so far. Compared to the shinobi world they are nothing, they can't even use their chakra, no one in this world can as they don't have the levels of chakra required to use more than an ounce and live Mr. D said, gaining a wistful look when he began talking about the shinobi world. Even if half-bloods have more chakra than the regular mortals of this world very few can use theirs, it would usually be a big three child if they could. Percy raised a brow at the camp director the way he called them mortals, it was like he wasn't. He could see why Grover was keeping his mouth shut and his eyes on his cards. Chiron shook his head at Mr. D's talk, honestly since he met that one Kunoichi, sired the first of the Senju clan and started the Wood Bloodline, he can't get enough of the ninja realm. He thought, and began to speak again, Percy, whether you choose to believe or not, but the fact is that immortal means immortal. Can you imagine that for a moment, never dying? Never fading? Existing, just as you are, for all time. His question got a response alright but not one that he could hear and not from the one he was speaking to, yeah I can. Thalia said sadly sniffling, her time alone still fresh in her mind. It's okay now Thalia Chan, as long as I'm here you will never be alone again. Naruto thought to her. Thalia hearing this blushed, and felt a strange warmth in her heart she had never had before, what is this feeling, she asked herself, but out loud she said gratefully, thank you Naruto-kun. Naruto sent a mental smile to her and turned his attention back to the events around him to hear Percy say, you're Dionysus, the god of wine. Mr. D rolled his eyes. What is it they say these days Grover? Is the saying well duh, he asked the nervous satyr who gave a shaky nod, why yes Mr. D. Then, well, duh. Percy Jackson, did you think I was Aphrodite, perhaps? Underworld. Ha ha. Kushina laughed, getting confused looks from the two others in the room. What? Hades asked confused as to what was said to make one of his wives like this. Yahiko was just staring at her confused. Oh, oh please like Dionysus could really be my mother, she said and continued to laugh. Hades froze when he heard this and gulped, which drew the other's gaze to him, something wrong. Yahiko asked. Hades just stood there frozen in shock. Yahiko walked over to him and waved his hand in front of Hades' face. He got no response, he turned to the women of the group, I think you broke him Kushina-san. He said. Kushina's sweat dropped when she heard this, but they looked over to Hades when he turned and slowly began to walk to the door. Hades Kun. Are you okay? Kushina asked worriedly she had never seen him like this. Hades said nothing as he walked out the door and out of the palace. You think that he's going to be okay? 
Yahiko asked Kushina. She was about to reply when a giant shout of Nuuuuu. Out of all the goddesses that could be my mother-in-law why did it have to be Aphrodite? Why do you hate me Zues? Is it because of the time I gave you that Omega Wedge, filled the entirety of the underworld? During the horror and fear filled shout the castle had began to shake and the others had covered their ears so that their eardrums wouldn't burst, but sweat dropped at the wedge part. Olympus Zeus good of lightning and sky looked up from the book he was studying and quirked a brow, why do I get the feeling that I have inadvertently caused Hades an untold amount of fear and horror, he thought to himself before he shrugged oh well. Serves him right for giving me that wedge. And he went back to the book he was reading. The novel was titled, Ceiling for Dummies. His son did have a point, his ceiling ability sucked. Kemp Half-Blood the group of two half-bloods, one satyr, one centaur, and one god continued their conversation unknowing what was going on in the underworld and on Olympus. You're a god. Percy stated blankly. Yes, child. Mr. D said. A god. You. I think that we all get that fact now. Naruto said not looking up from his cards, but still Percy stared, are you sure that you're a god? You don't look like one. Mr. D turned to look him straight in the eye, and Percy saw a kind of purplish fire in his eyes, a hint of his true power, and knew that if he pushed the subject any further than Dionysus would plant a disease in his brain. A disease that would have him seeing things like grapevines choking unbelievers to death, drunken warriors going insane with battle lust, or maybe sailors screaming as they were turned into dolphins for the rest of his life. Would you like to test me, child, he asked dangerously. Percy gulped, and shook his head, no. No sir he said. The fire died in Mr. D's eyes a bit and he turned back to the card game. I do believe that I win gentlemen. He said as he placed his cards down on the table to show his hand. Not quite, Mr. D. Chiron said and he set his own hand done to show a straight, I believe that the game goes to me. Actually Chiron, Naruto said and set his hand down to show a double roundabout, I win. He said leaning back. Everyone's eyes widened and they leaned in to check put the cards. My gods, Grover said as he looked to Naruto his eyes almost popping out of their sockets, you actually beat Chiron, he said, I knew you were lucky at card games but damn. No one has ever been able to beat Chiron at Pinnacle. He said. Naruto just shrugged, first time for everything. The activities and camp directors were just staring at the cards, before Mr. D began to laugh, ha ha. The brat did it. He actually beat you, he said between laughs. Chiron just looked at Dionysus blankly, his right eyebrow twitching madly, isn't it time for your daily nap, he asked, and Mr. D stopped abruptly and checked the watch on his wrist. Yes I do believe it is. He said and stood up and turned to Grover. Grover I think that before I take my nap that we should talk, again about your less than perfect performance on this assignment. The satyr's face began to bead with sweat. Why yes, sir. Mr. D turned to the two boys, Cabin Eleven, Percy Jackson and Naruto Izumaki. And both of you mind your manners. He swept into the farmhouse, Grover following behind miserably. The other two turned back to the other person at the table, who was still staring blankly at the cards Naruto had placed on the table. Seeing this Naruto began to chuckle nervously, drawing Chiron's attention, so no hard feelings right, he asked rubbing his the back of his head. An hour later. After getting over the shock of his loss Chiron had reassured Percy that Grover would be alright surprised him that his teacher was really half man and half horse, discussed the gods further, and giving him the tour. Chiron had showed them to cabin 11 where they saw Annabeth reading a book on the front steps. When they reached her she looked them over critically, like she was trying to decide their worth on something. They tried to look at what she was reading, Naruto could understand it but Percy couldn't make out the title. 
he realized that the words were Greek, literally Greek. There were pictures of temples, statues, and different kinds of columns, almost like an architecture book. Annabeth, Chiron said, I have an archery class to get to at the moment. Would you mind taking these two to meet their cabin mates? She nodded, yes, sir. Cabin 11, Chiron told the two boys, gesturing to the door, make yourselves at home. He said and galloped off in the direction of the archery range. Naruto and Percy turned to view the cabin they'd be staying in for now and saw that out of all the cabins, Eleven seemed to be the most like a regular old summer camp cabin. Major emphasis on old. The threshold was worn down, the brown paint was peeling, and over the door they saw what looked to be a battered caduceus. Inside it looked like the Red Cross had taken up residence, it was packed with people, boys, and girls, way more than the number of bunk beds would allow. After letting the boys take a good look at the cabin, Annabeth cleared her throat, well go on in, she said impatiently. They nodded and the two of them walked in, Annabeth right behind them. When they entered all the activity in the cabin stopped. Both sides stared awkwardly at each other. Annabeth getting tired of the silence cleared her throat again and said, Percy Jackson, Naruto Izumaki Harakin, meet Cabin 11. There was still an awkward silence, until a voice rang out, regular or undetermined. Undetermined, for the both of them. Annabeth answered. The campers groaned as one at this. Now, now, campers. That's what we're all here for. A voice called from the back and started to move through the crowded cabin. That voice. Naruto heard Thalia from the amulet, it's Luke's. He heard her exclaim happily as he saw a guy around the age of 18 maybe 19 come out of the crow to stand in front of them, Naruto smiled a bit, and thought to her, someone you know Leah chan He could practically feel her happy nod. Yeah, that's defiantly Luke. Though I don't remember him having that scar. But Luke's been the closest thing I've ever had to a brother since she trailed sadly, Naruto raised a brow but didn't push the matter, he knew she'd tell him when she was ready. He turned his attention to the older male, and saw that he looked pretty cool. He was tall and muscular, with short cropped sandy hair and a friendly smile. He had a bad scar going down the side of his face starting from right below his right eye and stopping just above his jaw. He wore an orange shirt with cut-off sleeves to make it a tank top, sandals, and a leather necklace with five different colored clay beads. Even though the guy looked like he was dependable, Naruto felt that there was something off about that smile of his, but he shook it thinking it was paranoia due to being in a new place. Welcome, Percy, Naruto sorry if it's a bit crowded but we'll find you both a spot to sleep until you can be claimed. He said that smile still on his face. This is Luke, Annabeth said, her voice sounding different than it had before. Looking back to her, the boys could have sworn that she was blushing. She saw them looking and her expression hardened to what it once was. He's your counselor for now. For now? Percy asked. Several of the campers shook their heads and Naruto had several more of the others snicker and mutter newbie. You're undetermined, Luke explained patently, since they don't know your godly parent they don't know what cabin to put you in, so you're here. Naturally cabin 11 takes all newcomers, all visitors. We would since Hermes our patron and for many of us our parent, is the god of travelers. Naruto nodded and Percy looked a little suspicious he seemed to remember that Hermes was also the god of thieves and had noticed that many of the inhabitants of Cabin 11 were eyeing them as if they were waiting for a chance to pick their pockets. How long will we be here? Percy asked. Good question. Luke said. Until you're determined. How long does that usually take? Percy asked a little fidgety. The campers laughed at him and Naruto face palmed and shook his head. Come one, Annabeth told the two of them. I'll show you guys the volleyball court. We've already seen it. Percy complained. Come on. She grabbed a hold of their wrists and dragged them outside. 
they could hear the kids of the cabin laughing at Percy behind them. Annabeth continued to drag them until they were a good distance away from the cabin, and she turned to them mostly Percy and said, Jackson, you have to do better than that. What? She rolled her eyes and mumbled something under her breath, I can't believe that I thought you two were the ones. What's your problem? Percy asked, somewhat angry now. All I know is that I killed some bull guy dash. He was interrupted when they heard Naruto snort, you did more than that Percy. He said, getting a confused look from him and a raised brow from Annabeth, I would bet that there are a lot of kids here that would literally kill for that chance. He said and Annabeth nodded to show it was true. For what? To get killed? Percy asked. Naruto sighed and Annabeth spoke up, to fight the Minotaur, she said, what do you think we train for? Percy shook his head. Look, if the thing I fought really was the Minotaur, the same one in the stories. Yes. Then there's only one. Yep Naruto said, before Annabeth could get the chance. And he died, several thousand years ago, right? Theseus killed him in the labyrinth. So. Monsters don't die, Percy. Naruto sighed, true they can be killed. But they don't die. Oh, thanks Pell. That clears up a lot of things. Percy said an eyebrow twitching. They don't have souls, like you, me and Naruto. Annabeth started, you can destroy them for a while, maybe even for a lifetime if you're lucky. But they are primal forces. Chiron calls them archetypes. Meaning? Percy asked, clearly fed up with the explanations. Meaning that they will eventually reform. Percy looked thoughtful for a moment and Naruto could see his thoughts even without the Rinnegan and nodded to him, yes Mrs. Dodds will be able to reform sometime in the near future. And trust me she will be angry he said making Percy gulp. It was bad enough when he thought she was a math teacher but now? He didn't even want to know. Annabeth looked at him surprised, how do you know all this? If you're a new camper you shouldn't know as much as you do she asked slash said. Naruto smirked to her, I've known that I'm a demigod since I was seven almost eight. He said further surprising her. Again how? She asked, Naruto rolled his eyes, that's for me to know and you to hopefully never find out. He said in a low voice. Annabeth was about to reply to that when a new voice shouted, well, looks like we got some newbies. They looked over to see a girl who looked to be 13 maybe 14 wearing a triple extra large camp half-blood t-shirt under a camouflage jacket, giving Naruto and Percy an evil sneer and two of her friends walking towards them. Clarice, Annabeth sighed. Why don't you go polish your spear or something? Sure, Miss Princess, the now named Clarice said. So I can run you and every one of your allies through with it this Friday night. Er yes Koronkas. Annabeth said with an angered expression. Percy somehow knew that it was Greek for, go to the crows, and judging by Naruto's mutter of oh, that's harsh, it was a worse cruise than it sounded. You don't stand a chance. We'll pulverize you, Clarice said, her eye twitching. She turned to the two guys, who are these runts, she asked. Naruto huffed and crossed his arms, hey. I'm taller than you, he said indignantly. Clarice just stared at him before she turned to Annabeth well, she asked. Percy Jackson and Naruto Izumaki Harakin, Annabeth said, meet Clarice daughter of Ares. They blinked, like the war god. Percy asked. You got a problem with that? Clarice sneered. Nope, but that would certainly explain the smell. Naruto said as he smirked, causing Clarice and her cabin mates to glare at them. We've got an initiation ceremony for punks like you too. She said and her friends began to surround them. Clarice Dash Annabeth tried to reason. Stay out of it, wise girl. Annabeth looked pained but she did. To be honest Percy didn't really want her help, he felt that since he was one of the new kids he had to earn his own rep. 
Naruto though just shook his head and sighed before he turned around, Percy, he said, drawing his attention, when you're done playing come back to the cabin I need to talk to you about something. He said and began to walk away. And where do you think you're going? Clarice, asked. Naruto shrugged as he walked, back to the cabin I'm staying in. Yeah whatever. Clarice said and as she turned around she said something she really shouldn't to him, wimp. When that word had escaped her mouth both Percy and Naruto froze. Percy in surprise and fear because he had seen what happens when someone calls Naruto a wimp, it wasn't pretty. And Naruto in rage, his eyes were narrow and his fists clenched tightly at his sides so tightly that they were shaking, what did you call me, he asked in a very low voice. His voice sent shivers down all those present, and made Helena and Thalia who had been watching gulp, oh, oh she's done it now, they thought at the same time. Clarice despite the warnings in her head smirked and continued to edge him on, you had me. I called you a wimp. That's what I thought, Naruto said. The next thing Clarice felt was a stinging pain in her stomach and then she was blasted into the into the water of the nearby lake. Nobody had seen Naruto move. His speed was just too great. As soon as Clarice had been sent to the lake Naruto had appeared in the space just in front of where she had been standing with his right fist still in the spot it had impacted her. Clarice rose to the surface gasping for air and spitting water from her mouth. As soon as she saw Naruto she yelled to her followers, don't just stand there. Get him. As ordered the two girls turned and drew daggers from the inside of their jackets. Percy didn't know what happened, but upon seeing his friend in danger had gone on instinct, he looked to the water and thought wave, he felt a tugging in the pit of his stomach, and the water responded to his thoughts. A giant wave of water rose from the lake and swept over the shore, picked up the other two Ares cabin members and dragged them over to the lake where it dropped them in and dumped itself over their heads as a final insult. Naruto would have been taken with it had he not felt Percy's chakra spike and seen the wave coming and jumped over it. Spiting and gasping for air the again Clarice yelled to the group on the shore, this isn't over. Come Friday night you are both dead, she yelled as she and the other two began swimming to shore. Naruto and Percy probably should have let it go but they felt the need to give one last rubbing to the wound, you want another punch? Naruto asked or more water in your face. Percy asked, because you call us wimps again, we will remind you that we are not. Naruto said glaring to them. They looked over to Annabeth who was staring at them in shock, H how were you two able to do those things? I don't know. Lots of training with weights and gravity seals. She continued to stare at them, until Percy asked, what are you thinking? I'm thinking. Annabeth said, that I want you both on my team for capture the flag. Word of Naruto's insane strength and speed and Percy's ability with water spread quickly. Wherever they went, campers would point and whisper something about the event. Annabeth showed them a few places they hadn't seen in either of their tours. The metal shop, the arts and crafts room, and the climbing wall. Well I have training to do, Annabeth said. Dinner's at 7.30. Just follow your cabin to the mess hall. Yeah thanks for the tour. Percy said with a small grin, what he couldn't see was that Annabeth had a small blush when he grinned to her. Naruto however did see it and he began plotting to turn him to the pervy ways, he hurts my friend and you both get a lightning bolt where it hurts most. Thalia growled to him, and he immediately stopped his plotting fearing for his manhood. He came out of his thoughts to see Annabeth walking away and Percy looking at him expectantly, what, he asked. You said you needed to talk to me about something, Percy said. Naruto nodded as he remembered what it was he wanted to talk to him about, right, he said and he started leading him to the docks. He sat on the edge and motioned for Percy to do the same. After doing so Percy asked. Okay so what is it you wanted to talk about? Naruto was silent for a minute as he gathered his thoughts before he began, what did it feel like to use your power, 
he asked, gaining a confused look from Percy. Huh. Naruto sighed and asked again, I meant when you were controlling the water what did it feel like? Percy thought for a while trying to remember the feeling, it felt like he said unsure of how to describe it, well I guess you could say it felt like something was tugging at the center of my stomach. He said. Naruto nodded, I thought so. What do you mean? Percy asked. What I mean is that tugging feeling in the pit of your stomach is your chakra trying to work. Naruto explained, getting wide eyes from Percy, B but I thought only a few demigods could use their chakra. He got a nod from the resident ninja, yeah that's true but if I'm right about who your dad is then you might be one of the few who can. Percy's eyes widened when he realized the complications of if he could use chakra, but that would mean, he said unwilling to finish the sentence. Mean that you would be a big three child? Yes it would. Naruto said, drawing a very confused look from Percy. Wouldn't that mean that I shouldn't be alive, he asked, Naruto just chuckled with a nod. And you are laughing why? Percy asked. Because if any of the gods really cared if the big three had any kids then neither you Thalia or I would be alive. He said looking up to the sky. Okay first of all, Percy said rubbing his head, who's this Thalia person? And second, you said that neither she me or you would be alive if the other gods really cared. Does that mean that you're Dash? A big three kid? Yes I am. Naruto finished for him and answered at the same time, and then pointed to the pine tree in the distance, and Thalia is the one that was used to make that tree by sealing her spirit into it, he said. Okay, Percy said still confused, do you know which one is your dad? Naruto shook his head, nope. He said simply. Percy sweat dropped, then how the hell do you know that you are, he asked. Naruto smirked, he was getting a similar question from Thalia, because he was the one who sent me and my adopted mother to this world. He said. Percy looked even more confused, and he sighed and explained. One story later. Wow. Percy said with wide eyes, and Thalia had the same reaction to him after hearing the full story of how he and Conan had ended up in this world. Yet a little hard to believe. Naruto said before his voice turned serious, now however you now have a choice to make. He said turning to Percy. What? A choice between either being trained to use your chakra properly or fending for yourself only using the skills you learn through battle. Naruto explained, getting wide eyes from Percy, personally I would prefer being trained on how to use Cha Dash, you'd actually teach me how to use Chakra. Naruto was interrupted by Percy asking this. He looked at him and nodded, yes I would, but be warned should you accept it your training will be much like mine was, aka absolute hell. He said, making Percy gulp but nod, I accept your training. Percy said, figuring it would be best to suffer now than later. Naruto nodded, thinking, that was easy, but out loud he said, very well then your training begins in the morning. They heard a horn sound a second later signaling dinner. They headed back to their temporary cabin and got into line. Dinner that night while a little weird was one of the happiest Percy had ever had. Four days later. Again. Naruto shouted as he swung his sword at the battered Percy, who tried his best to block with his own but Naruto was too fast and Percy's shirt was cut open. Come on, that's the second shirt today, he thought as he jumped back to avoid being hit by Naruto's blade and again becoming a bit more battered due to not being able to fully dodge it. They kept at it for a few hours before Naruto called a break, by which time Percy was nothing much more than a heap of battered flesh on the ground. Well you're getting faster, Naruto said, as he sat down next to said heap of flesh. I hate you, Percy groaned as he tried to sit up and failed to do so. Naruto grinned as he heard this, good then that means I'm teaching you right. He said as he poured some cold water onto Percy's head. Almost immediately Percy healed and lifted himself into a sitting position, and he glared at his friend turned teacher. 
teaching me what exactly, he asked annoyed taking the bottled water from Naruto and taking a greedy gulp, all you've done is teach me how to access my chakra, then after that all you've done is work on my speed. He said, you haven't even started me on the chakra control yet. Percy finished. It was true too, after he had been able to get a feel for his chakra and learned how to bring it out slash use it all they had done was work on his speed and reaction time while they simultaneously worked his sword skills. It was really starting to get annoying, that and he was starting to run low on shirts. Naruto sighed, Percy while it's true that you can now use chakra, a good warrior is nothing without even the smallest amount of speed. I know that Naruto. But isn't there some way to work on my speed while I do an everyday task? Percy asked. Naruto looked thoughtful for a moment and he grimaced as an idea struck him. He turned to Percy and nodded, there is but it won't be pleasant. He said, and Percy looked curious, there is, he asked. Naruto nodded again, yeah, it's called a gravity seal. It works by being placed in the center of someone's back, it multiplies the force of gravity on the body by any fraction you want. He explained, and saw Percy's amazed look. But, he continued, breaking Percy out of his state, if it's done wrong the force of gravity on the body can be multiplied to a fatal level and crush the bones to dust the instant it's activated, but if done right, it'll steadily become greater as your body gets used to it, he said. Percy whistled, so what force of gravity are you on, he asked, Naruto grinned a bit, I recently upgraded it to five times what is normal for the body to experience. He said. Again Percy whistled, can you apply on to me, he asked. Naruto who had been taking a drink spewed water out of his mouth, W what? I asked if you could apply one to me, he asked again, a determined fire burning in his eyes. Naruto looked at him for a good while before he sighed, yeah I can if you want. Percy's response was to grin and give a small fist pump. But for now I guess I'll start you on chakra control, since you are up to mid gen in level and speed, and that is good enough for most demigods. Naruto said causing further joy to his friend slash student. Now, he said standing, and sealing his sword, we will begin with tree walking. Two days later. Two days later Percy was at the very least high gen in level and skill, he could get to the top of the tree, could almost walk on water, and was doing pretty well on his sword stances. They had also found that Percy could produce a large amount of shadow clones and he used them in a similar fashion to his teacher as well, he didn't use a lot of them for training but used what he dared to get his chakra control to an acceptable level. And that like Naruto had expected he had a very high water affinity with a minor wind element. His speed was defiantly faster because Naruto had given him the gravity seal, and he was adjusting well to it. Put all together and even if he wasn't very skilled Percy would be able to give any half-blood a run for their money. And Naruto had decided that they could start his elemental training soon. But at the moment they had a different thing on their minds than training. It was finally time for capture the flag, and the night air that was usually calm and quiet now had an edge of excitement to it. After the dinner plates had been cleared away, the conch horn sounded and campers began cheering as Annabeth and two of her siblings ran into the pavilion carrying a silk banner. From the other side of the pavilion Clarice led her friends in with another banner, of identical size but a very different design. Naruto raised a brow and turned to Luke. So those are the flags, he asked. Luke nodded, yeah. Ares and Athena always lead the teams. Like shook his head, not always, but often. So, if another cabin captures one, what do you do repaint it? Percy asked as he turned his attention to them. Luke grinned, you'll see. But first we'll have to get the opponent's flag. Whose side are we on? Percy asked. This time Luke gained a sly look, like he knew something they didn't. The scar on his face made him look evil in the torchlight, and Naruto once again got the feeling that there was something off about the counselor. 
We've made a temporary alliance with Athena. Tonight we get the flag for Ares. And you both are going to help. Luke said, bringing Naruto out of his thoughts. The teams were announced. Athena had made an alliance with Apollo and Hermes, the two biggest cabins. Ares had gone for everyone else, Dionysus, Demeter, Aphrodite, and Hephaestus. From what Naruto and Percy had observed the Dionysus kids were pretty good athletes, but there were only two of them. Demeter's children had the edge with nature skills and other outdoor stuff, but weren't very aggressive. Aphrodite's kids they weren't very worried about. They had seen them sitting out of mostly every activity and checking out their reflections in the lake while they did their hair or gossiped. Hephaestus's kids weren't what you would call pretty, and there were only four of them, but they were big and burly from working in the metal shop all day. They might be a problem, but they didn't worry much. And finally Ares's cabin, a dozen of the biggest, ugliest, meanest kids on Long Island. Chiron began hammering his hoof on the marble. Heroes, he announced. You know the rules. The creek is the boundary line. The entire forest is fair game. All magic items are allowed. The banner must be prominently displayed, and have no more than two guards. Prisoners may be disarmed and bound, but may not be gagged. No killing or maiming is allowed. I will serve as referee and field medic. Arm yourselves. He spread his hands, and the tables were suddenly covered with equipment, helmets, bronze swords, spears, oxhide shields coated in metal. While Naruto whistled, Percy was wide-eyed. Whoa, we're really supposed to use these, he asked turning to Luke who looked at him like he was crazy. Unless you want to get skewered by your friends in Cabin 5. Here Chiron thought these might fit. You will be on border patrol since we don't know what you're capable of. Luke said and he looked up to Naruto, who was stuffing something down the front of his shirt and something else into his pocket. He looked over to them when he felt Luke's gaze, what, he asked. You want to tell me what Percy is able to do? Luke said to him. Naruto shook his head, now what kind of teacher would I be if I started to reveal all of my students' abilities, he asked. What'll I be doing? Luke sighed but nodded to him, you're going to be guarding the flag from the enemies. At hearing his job Naruto nodded and turned to wait for the order to move. Like raised a brow, you aren't going in armed, he asked. Naruto smirked, and he unsealed his sword, actually I have a weapon already. He said and Luke's eyes went wide while Percy muttered show off. H how were you able to make it appear out of nowhere? Luke stuttered. Naruto's smirk widened and he began walking, that's my secret. He said without turning around. Luke's brow twitched but he turned back to Percy to help him with his armor, muttering smart ass. Blue team, forward. Annabeth called. Everyone on the team cheered and shook their swords, and followed her down the path and into the northern part of the forest. Percy managed to catch up to the front and found himself between Naruto and Annabeth. Hey. Annabeth kept marching while Naruto gave a hey back, what's the plan? Any of you got any magic items to loan me? He asked. Annabeth's hand drifted towards her pocket, like she was afraid he had stolen something. Naruto shook his head, sorry Percy but the only thing I have is going to be kept secret and with me until I feel it's right to reveal. Percy groaned. Just watch Clarissa's spear, Annabeth spoke up. Neither of you want to have that thing touch you. Otherwise, don't worry. We'll take the banner from Ares. Has Luke given you guys your jobs? They nodded, I'm guarding the flag. Naruto said. Border patrol, whatever that means. Percy said dejectedly. It's easy. Just stand by the creek, keep the reds away. Leave the rest to me. Athena always has a plan. She pushed ahead, leaving them in the dust. Okay, Percy muttered, glad you wanted us on your team. 
Naruto shook his head and patted Percy on the back, it'll be alright, just give her some time to warm up to you. He said moving ahead of him. Percy raised a brow in confusion, what's that supposed to mean, he asked his friend, Naruto didn't look back, nothing. After Annabeth had stationed them in their positions. Naruto created a clone to take his place, and then brought out the item his father had left him from his pocket. It was a black crystal with a red slit on its front, attached to a small chain to be worn around his neck, he remembered when he opened the scroll that held it. Flashback Naruto was sitting on one of the docks after a day of training Percy in the ninja arts, I swear that kid has potential. He thought as he watched the sun beginning to set. The last few days had been nothing but training his friend so it was good to just relax. But why do I feel as if I've forgotten to do something, he thought trying to remember. Helena sighed when she heard this, because you have, she said drawing a raised brow from her container slash boyfriend. Then what is it? Just something that your dad left you, he left it in the scroll that was locked. Helena said, ring any bells. Naruto's eyes widened when he remembered and he face palmed, how can I be so stupid? Helena and Thalia giggled to themselves. A sigh escaped his lips as he unsealed his father's scroll from his upper left arm. He unrolled it bit his thumb till it bed and wiped it across the seal, a plume of smoke later and he was holding a note in a necklace, he brought the note to his face and read. Naruto. So you finally got to camp and unsealed your magic item, eh? That's good, as it means that the time for you to be claimed is near. That item is modeled after your godmother's own necklace, which was able to help the first Hokage to either calm or control the tailed beasts. I might as well tell you what it does and after that you should be able to figure out who I am. The item that this scroll contained is called the Necklace of Darkness, it has similar abilities to what my own symbol of power holds. Those being that it can turn the user invisible, it has the abilities of melting into shadow, traveling through walls and it can use the shadows as a means of transportation and produce a strong feeling of fear. To work it all you need to do is attach the crystal onto the chain, and channel some chakra into it. Just detach it from the chain to deactivate it. That's what it does my son, you should be able to figure out who I am but please if you do don't tell Chiron about me. I want it to be a surprise for everyone at camp. Sincerely, Minato Namikaze P.S., have you followed my warning about the women in your life? Because you should. Naruto once again sweat dropped at his father's postscript, yes dad I have and thank you for the warning. He thought hearing Helena and Thalia giggle again. Now whose symbol of power is similar to the abilities of this little thing, he thought raising it up to eye level so he could inspect it. Thalia began to think too. Helena didn't because she already knew who he was but didn't say anything wanting Naruto to figure it out. Both their eyes widened when a very possible answer came to them, and no it can't be, they thought as one. Flashback end. He had figured it out alright and he had been in denial for a few days. His dad and the one summoned to do the sealing were the same being. Was what had plagued his mind during that time. It just didn't seem possible but it was. After he had accepted the fact that his father was the death god he had gotten angry, very angry, and had spent an entire day destroying horde after horde of any type of clones he had in his arsenal. After that he had numbly gone into his mindscape and broken. Down crying clutching Helena tightly. Thalia would have been there for him but she decided to let him have his space. She didn't blame him for being the son of the one who had hunted her till she was turned to a tree. After that Naruto had been filled with an overbearing sense of respect for his father. But he was going to have a nice long talk with the man when he came to claim him. Now let's see how this works. He thought as he walked into the forest clasping it onto the chain around his neck and channeling a minute amount of chakra into it. The affect was almost instantaneous. As soon as the chakra hit it the crystal had began to glow a dark purple and his world darkened. 
He looked around and saw that he could tell where everything was, and that he could see where every shadow would take him. It was a lot like when he used the Rinnegan but without the clearer sight, he just knew where everything was. He smirked when he realized the possibilities he could use this for, but at the moment he had to watch his student, he started walking in the direction he last saw him. He found that while he was walking that it was like a shadow version of the body flicker jutsu, because every step he took brought him several feet away from his last position. This will take some getting used to. Naruto thought. He arrived at the creek just as Clarice and her gang started to surround a downed Percy. Naruto shook his head at their stupidity as he saw Percy get pushed into the creek. They don't know what they're doing allowing him anywhere near water, he thought, and smirked when as he felt Percy's chakra start to rise the instant he touched the water. This'll be fun to watch. And indeed it was, he watched as Percy swung the flat of his blade and hit ugly number one's helmet off, and caused him to crumble to the ground. Naruto grinned when he saw his student cream ugly numbers two and three, by slamming one of them in the face with his shield and shear off the other guy's horsehair plume causing them to back up faster than Naruto could say ramen. Naruto's grin could have been seen from space if he didn't have the necklace on. When Clarice came in her spear point cackling with energy, he grinned evilly, when Percy managed to jam it between his sword and shield and snap it like a twig. You idiot. Clarice screamed, core breath worm. She could have said worse but she was stopped when Percy smacked her between the eyes with the butt of his sword. Why do I feel a sense of pride for my student? Naruto asked himself as he watched that happen. They began hearing elated screams and everyone there invisible or not, saw Luke racing towards the boundary line a few teammates flanking him with the Ares flag clasped in his hands and lifted high above him. The Ares cabin kids got up dazed and Clarice muttered a curse, a trick, she shouted, it was a trick. They staggered after Luke, but it was way too late. Everybody converged on the creek as Luke ran across onto friendly territory. Their allies exploded into cheers, as the red banner began to shimmer and turn to silver. The game was over. They had won. Percy was about to join the celebration when he heard two voices behind him, not bad hero slash my student. He looked but there was no one there. Okay I thought I was the only one with an item that turned me invisible. Came Annabeth's voice as she shimmered into existence stuffing her Yankees cap into her pocket. I didn't know what my item would do until I read the note my dad left me and this was my first time using it. Naruto's voice sounded as his form came out of the shadows stuffing something into his front pocket. Percy began to get angry he wasn't even phased that two had just been invisible. You guys set me up, he said. Naruto gave a sheepish shrug, I had to know how well you would use the training I gave you in a real battle. Percy looked at him suspiciously before he turned to Annabeth, and you, he asked. The girl shrugged, I told you. Athena always has a plan. A plan to get me killed. I came as fast as I could but dash. You didn't need any help. Naruto interrupted with a proud eye smile to his student slash friend. You have done well my disciple. He said. I did. Percy asked surprised. I thought that I was the one getting pounded until I got into the water. It was then that Annabeth noticed the wound that Clarice had given him, how did you go that, she asked. Sard cut, Percy said. What do you think? Actually Percy, Naruto said. It was a sword cut. Look at it. He did, and saw that where there was once free flowing blood there was none and the wound itself had healed into a long white scar. And even that was quickly fading. He looked up to see Naruto nodding to himself, and that Annabeth was thinking hard. I I don't get it, he said. Just as Naruto was about to speak Annabeth said, Get out of the water Percy. What dash? Do it Percy. Naruto said. Knowing that arguing wouldn't help, Percy did as he was told. And as soon as his feet left the water he felt exhausted. 
his arms began to go numb, the adrenaline left his system, and he would have fallen flat on his face had Naruto not caught him. After watching all this Annabeth let out a curse, oh, sticks, she said. This is not good. I didn't want I assumed that it would be Zeus. Before the other two could question her, they heard a canine growling, it was low but it was close, and a howl ripped through the forest. The cheering of the campers died instantly, and Chiron said something in ancient Greek that Percy would later realize is, stand ready. My bow. Annabeth drew her sword and Percy felt Naruto stiffen. There on the rocks just above them was a black hound the size of a rhino, with lava red eyes and fangs like daggers trained directly at the one that Naruto was supporting, nobody moved except Annabeth who yelled, Naruto. Take Percy and run. She tried to step in front of them but the hound was too fast and leapt over her. It came down on the other two and knocked Percy off of Naruto's shoulder and began to tear into him. Naruto was about to draw his sword to stop it but he heard several things go whistling by him, and heard a cascade of thwacking, and watched as a cluster of arrows, sprouted from the hound's neck. By a strange miracle, Percy was still alive. His chest was a mess, chunks of flesh were ripped out of him, and blood was gushing out of the wounds. Another second or so the monster would have turned him into a hundred pounds of delicatessen meat. Chiron trotted up to them, a bow in hand, and his face grim. The immortals. Annabeth said, that was a hellhound from the fields of punishment. They don't they're not supposed to. Someone summoned it, Chiron said. Someone inside the camp. The body of the hellhound melted into shadow, soaking it into the ground until it vanished with a small poof of smoke. Naruto stared at where the animal disappeared at deep in his thoughts, how did a hellhound get into camp? I didn't summon it, and when I signed the contract it said I was the first on to do so. He thought before something struck him, unless there's other ways to summon in this world without a contract. He was brought out by his thoughts when he heard Annabeth say, Quick, Percy get into the water. I'm okay. No you're not. Naruto said as he shook his head free of his thoughts, Now get into the water. Percy being too tired to argue stepped back into the creek as the whole camp gathered around him to watch. The instant he touched the cool water there were numerous gasps as Percy's wounds began to heal and knit themselves back together. And unknown to Percy a bright sea green trident began to form above him. Look, I, I don't know why, he tried to say but was interrupted by Annabeth Percy, she said pointing above him. UMM. By the time Percy looked up the trident had already began to fade, your father. Annabeth murmured. This is not really not good. It is determined, Chiron announced. Every one of the campers began to kneel in front of him, Naruto, Annabeth, even Ares' cabin though they didn't look pleased about it. My father? Percy asked. Poseidon, Chiron said. Earthshaker, Stormbringer. Father of horses. Hail. Perseus Jackson, son of the sea god. Well, looks like my younger brother claimed his child before I could do the same to mine. Wouldn't you agree Kushina? A voice coming from behind everybody said. It was followed by a feminine giggle and everyone turned to where they heard the voices. Many of the campers gasped and many more of them passed out from shock. But Naruto froze when he saw who it was that was standing there. The two people that had arrived in camp were Hades God of the Dead, and his second wife Kushina Uzumaki. D-Dad, M-Mom. That will be it for this reading.